Section 1. When Jethro heard Rabbi Shishkiah begins a discussion to do with raising up the hands, it is important to raise them only in prayer and blessing as the ten fingers correspond to the ten potentates who receive blessings and to the ten sayings. The lesson turns to the king and priest above and the king and priest below and we learn that there is a king and a priest of the other side as well. The number ten is additionally significant as God struck the Pharaoh with ten plagues. About Jethro we now learn that he gave advice to Moses on the administration of justice following the laws of God and Moses listened to him though the people had seen the miracles done by Moses they gave up their idol worship and believed in Moses God only after Jethro who was a powerful priest of Midian acknowledged the greatness of Hashem we read of the three advisors to the Pharaoh Jethro Job and Bilam Bilam was a sorcerer but Job had fear and we are told of the great power of fear to draw down the spirit from above whether it be holy or from the other side while Job converted to worship of the Holy One due to the fear generated by his witnessing of the miracles Jethro did not convert until after the drowning in the Red Sea however Bilam neither repented nor converted we are told that even in the other side there is a small streak of light that comes from the Holy Side and Bilam knew how to use this in the same way Moses saw a fine streak of darkness from the other side so we learn that all things connect to one another, the pure and the impure one. When Jethro the priest of Midian, Moses' father in law, heard of all that Hashem had done for Moses, Shemot 181, Rabbi Shishkia opened the discussion, saying, And Aaron lifted up his hands, Vayikra 922, his hands is spelled without Yod, thus meaning one hand only, and this is the reason one should lift up his right hand above his left hand, and we have already explained the secret too. I found this in the book of King Solomon. Anyone who desires to raise his hands upwards without any prayer or request in them will be cursed by ten potentates. These are ten rulers who are in the city, Kahilat 719. These ten potentates are designated for those who spread their hands upwards to receive this prayer or that blessing and to bestow upon them powers through which the holy name is exalted and blessed from below. When the name is blessed from below through the spreading of the hands upwards, it then receives blessings from. Above thus it is exalted from all sides three these ten appointed potentates are there to receive the blessings from above and propel them below to bless those who are deserving of these blessings as it is written and I will bless them. Bimid bar 627 for consequently man must be careful that at the time when he raises his hands upwards they are raised in prayer and blessing or in entreaty and he must not raise his hands idly since those ten potentates are ready and are roused towards the spreading of the hands and if it is in vain these ten will curse it with 248 curses this is what is written for he loved cursing and it came to him Tehillim 10,917 5 and thus an impure spirit rests on these hands for its way is to rest in empty places but blessings do not rest in empty places therefore it is written I have raised my hand to Hashem the most high I'll bear sheet 1,422 which is translated into Aramaic as with prayer 6 this lifting of the hands has Supreme secrets at the time that one spreads out his hands and lifts them upwards man glorifies the Holy One blessed be he with many supernal secrets and is worthy of uniting the ten sayings in order to unify the whole and bless the Holy Name properly he also unites the inner chariots of Atzala and the outer chariots outside Atzala so that the Holy Name may be blessed from all sides and all becomes one above and below seven he opened the discussion saying and none shall appear before me. Empty Shema 2315 this is the secret of the raising of the fingers for when man spreads his fingers upwards he should not do so in vain but only with prayer supplications and blessings this is the secret of and none shall appear before me let my face empty it does not say and none shall appear before me but rather let my face which refers to the secret of the raising of the fingers that it should not be done without an intention as we said eight the ten rulers of which we spoke are. The lower ten sayings according to the secret of the inscribed letters correlating to those above and at first they have control of the raising of the fingers and through this the whole side of holiness is united above thus the other side yields all and acknowledges the holy king none come and behold in the secret doctrine of holiness there is a king and a priest who serves under him both above and below the king above is the secret of holy of holies namely Bani he is the king above and under him there is a priest the secret of primeval light who ministers before him which is the sphere of Jesus he is the priest who is called great at the right side ten there is a king below namely Malchut in the likeness of the king above and he is the king over all that is below namely the worlds of Bria Yitzhara and Asiyah and under him there is a priest who ministers to him whom we signify as Michael the high priest at his right hand namely Jesus this is the true secret of faith. The side of holiness 11 on the other side meaning the side which is not holy there is a secret which is a king and we have established that he is called an old and foolish king Kahila 413 this is the evil inclination and under him there is a priest of on as it is written in the verse and Ephraim said yet I am become rich I have found wealth have on for myself Hashia 129 this is the priest of the other side because this power unruled over an act of idolatry committed by Jeroboam and if there had not been such power he would not have been able to succeed in his act 12 the essence of this matter is as follows when this king and this priest of the other side yield and their power is broken then all the other sides yield and acknowledge the sovereignty of the holy one blessed be he then the holy one blessed be he alone rules both above and below as it is written and Hashem alone shall be exalted on that day Shea 211 13 the holy one blessed be he acted in a Similar manner and with this exact secret here on earth in breaking the old and foolish king namely Pharaoh in the hour that Moses came to Pharaoh and said to him the Elohim of the Hebrews had met with us Shema 53 he replied I know not Hashem but to the Holy One blessed be he desired that his name be glorified on earth as it is glorified above and he struck him with ten plagues after he struck him and his nation Pharaoh came and acknowledged the Holy One blessed be he 14 afterwards he broke and humbled the priest of Jethro that served under him until he came and acknowledged the Holy One blessed be he saying blessed be Hashem who has delivered you now I know that Hashem is great Shema 1810 to 11 and this is the priest of from the other side which is the left side and this is the secret Rachel communicated when she saw that she said Beno and I lit son of my sorrow Bershi 3518 and because of this Jacob hastened to say Benjamin lit son of the right the right side and not the left side 15 when the king and that priest acknowledged the holy one blessed be he and were humbled before him the holy one blessed be he was then above everyone in glory above and below and before the holy one blessed be he rose in glory before these acknowledged the Torah was not yet given it was only after Jethro came and acknowledged him by saying I now know that Hashem is supreme over all other Elohim blessed be Hashem who has delivered you then the holy one blessed be he rose in glory above and below and only afterwards was the Torah given in full expressing his sovereignty over all 16 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion with the following verse let the peoples praise you Elohim let all the peoples give thanks to you Tehillim 673 come and behold King David rose and praised and thanked the holy king he was studying the Torah at that moment when the north wind rose and struck the strings of his harp and the harp made music he asks now what was the song of the harp 17 and he responds come and behold in the hour that the holy one blessed be he is roused towards the chariots to give them nourishment as it is written she rises while it is night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens Mishlei 3115 then everyone opens joyfully Elohim be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us Selah Tehillim 672 and when the north wind is awakened and descends upon the world it blows saying that your way may be known upon earth your salvation among all nations Ibid 3 and the harp at the hour that it is played by that wind opens and says let all the peoples give thanks to you when he was awakened and roused by the holy spirit David said the earth has yielded her increase and Elohim even our Elohim shall bless us Elohim shall bless us and let all the ends of the earth fear him Ibid 8 so as to draw down the goodness of the holy one blessed be he from above downwards later David roused by the holy Spirit arranged all the songs into one as it is written Elohim will bless you as he observed the scriptural verse of the harp let all the peoples give thanks to you Ibid 5 for the glorification of the Holy One blessed be he is above and below namely and let all the ends of the earth fear him 18 the hour when the other nations yielded came and they acknowledged the Holy One blessed be he once they yielded and acknowledged him the glory of the Holy One blessed be he became complete above and below in the hour that Moses came to Pharaoh and said to him the Elohim of the
Praise you, O Elohim, let all the peoples give thanks to you. Then Rabbi Lazar came and kissed the hand of his father, Rabbi Abawat, and said, As a father pities his children, Tehillim 10,313, who will have pity on Rabbi Lazar and bring his words to completion, except by the love of my master. How happy can we consider ourselves that we were privileged to hear these words so that we shall not be ashamed through them in the world to come? 22 Rabbi Abba said it was not written that Jethro was a priest of On, but rather of Midian. He said to him, It is all one. At first, the father in law of Joseph was called the priest of On. Afterwards, the father in law of Moses was called the priest of Midian, for all are of the same secret. The priest of Midian is similar to the priest of On, for these two Moses and Joseph are at the same grade of secret. The secret of the letter Bob that is fully spelled with two Bobs together. The first Bob refers to Moses Typher, at the second Bob is Joseph Yazid, and what is said. Of the priest of Midian is the secret of a contentious head Midianine woman 23 Rabbi Abba raised his hands to his head and cried saying the light of the Torah now reaches the highest throne in heaven when the master passes away from earth who will light the lamp of the Torah woe to the world which will be orphaned from you however the words of the master will shine in the world until there comes the king Messiah and then it is written the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Hashem. Yeshua 119 24 when Jethro Rabbi Shia said we should look further into this verse in the first instance it is written everything that Elohim did for Moses Shema 181 later it is written and that Hashem has brought Yisrael out of it he answers this is the secret everything that Elohim did which is Malchut is the name that protected Moses and Yisrael and did not move from them in exile later it was the supreme name which brought them out of Egypt for the name that brought them forth. From Egypt is the principle of Jubilee which is by the 25 another interpretation everything that Elohim did for Moses refers to when he was thrown into the river and was saved from the sword of Pharaoh and for Israel his people is as it is written and Elohim heard their groaning Shema 224 and but the more they afflicted them the more they multiplied and grew Shema 112 26 when Jethro the priest of Midian Rabbi Yussi began the discussion saying he sent redemption to his people he has commanded his covenant forever holy and revered is his name Tehillim 1119 he asks why is there a difference in all other verses each verse has two letters in alphabetical order such as the verse before which is spelled with two letters same Akanayan however in this verse and the verse following it there are three each in this verse there are three letters and the verse following has three letters the reply this is in order to complete six aspects by the alphabet which are the Three redemptions of Israel and the three divisions of the scriptures, the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. This verse corresponds to the three redemptions of Israel, Babylon, Greece, and Edom. Apart from the first redemption from Egypt, which had already taken place, the last verse corresponds to the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. And everything is dependent upon this wisdom, since the Torah, the prophets, and the writings depend and come from wisdom. The following verse therefore begins with the beginning of Shachmah 27. Another interpretation of He sent redemption to His people is when the Holy One, blessed be He, brought forth Israel from the land of Egypt and caused mighty deeds and miracles. He had commanded His covenant forever. This is when Jethro came and was received by the Holy One, blessed be He, who brought him closer to His worship. And so all proselytes were brought near under the wings of the Shechinah from then onward. Holy and revered is His name for then it. Holy name of the Holy One, blessed be he became hallowed. The holy name becomes further hallowed when the other side becomes broken and yielding as it was with Jethro 28. When Jethro he asks only Jethro heard while the rest of the world did not hear is it not written the people shall hear and be afraid. Shemot 1514 he answers indeed the whole world did hear but they were not broken therefore it was as if they did not hear but he heard and was broken and yielded before the Holy One blessed. Be he and was brought near to fearing him therefore his is indeed a hearing. 29 Rabbi Abba said in many places we have learned that whatever the Holy One blessed be he does above or below is all true and his works are true and there is nothing in the world that man needs to reject or find despicable for all our works of truth and are all needed in the world. 30 it once happened that Rabbi Lazar was walking along the road accompanied by Rabbi Shizkiah they saw a snake and Rabbi. Shiski arose to kill it. Rabbi Lazar said to him, Leave it alone, do not kill it. He replied to him, But this is an evil thing that kills human beings. He said to Rabbi Shiskiah, But it is written, If the serpent bites and cannot be charmed, lit without a charm. Kahilah 1011, The snake does not bite a person unless it is whispered to from above and ordered, Go and kill that person 31 at times, just as it does this, so does it save man from other things, and thus by its hand does the Holy One perform a miracle for men. Everything is in the hands of the Holy One, blessed be he, for it is all his creation. The world needs them, for if the world did not need them, the Holy One, blessed be he, would not have created them. Therefore, man must not conduct himself in a despicable manner with things of the world. How much more so with the words or the acts of the Holy One, blessed be he. 32 He opened the discussion with the verse, and Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very Good Bereshit 131 and Elohim saw refers to living Elohim which is Bani and Elohim saw means he was intent upon giving them light and guarding them everything that he had made is everything united above and below very is the left side good is the right side as it was already established very is the angel of death good is the angel of life it is all one secret a secret to those who observe the mystery of wisdom 33 and Elohim saw everything that he had made he asks throughout the works of creation it is written and Elohim saw that it was good but here it is written and Elohim saw everything he had made he answers the lower Elohim Malchut rules those below the Elohim above Bani rules those above Elohim above that rules those above is an aspect of the living Elohim which is Bani hence and Elohim saw everything he had made as he illuminated and lit all candles above and below and from there all lights emerged to illuminate the subtitle 34. Upon the most hidden of all that is hidden, one imprint was impressed that is neither seen nor revealed. This impression is an impression, yet not an impression. Those of understanding and open eyes gifted in wisdom cannot understand its nature. It maintains everything. This impression is so small as to be unseen and not revealed, existing there by the will to sustain all it receives, whatever it receives from that which has no impression or will and is not visible. 35. This impression desired to veil itself and created for itself a chamber with which to be covered. It drew it from itself and extended it with great expansion from all sides and adorned it with valuable attire, thereby opening up in at 50 gates. 36. In the innermost part in that chamber, that impression was treasured and concealed. After being concealed, it was penetrated by light from this light. There issued forth lights and sparks and it emerged through the gates of the chamber and showed upon everything. 37. This Chamber is cloaked, that is to say, clothed with six screens, yet these six screens are but five in the innermost part of these screens. There prevails one embroidered screen, it is with the screen that the chamber is covered and clothed from within it monitors and sees everything. 38. This chamber is the opening of eyes, so that it does not sleep, it is forever attentive to shed light below out of the light of the impression. This understanding, this concealed wisdom and the will of wills is concealed and cloaked and not revealed, it exists, yet does not exist. Blessed be it from the concealed of all the concealed, blessed be it forever and eternally. Amen. End of this of the 39. Come and behold, it was Jethro who gave advice to Moses on the administration of justice, and this is how it should be, and this is the secret of acknowledging the Holy One. Blessed be he and arranging openly the administration of justice to teach what is written for the judgment is Elohim's Devarim 117 and not. Of the other side and these laws were given to Israel and to none other as it is written his statutes and his judgments to Israel. Tehillim 14719 come and behold man must not despise another and the words from a layman are still words as it is written of Moses and Moses here came to the voice of his father in law 40 when Jethro heard he opened the discussion saying therefore I will give thanks to you Hashem among the nations and sing praises to your name. Tehillim 1850 King David said this in the spirit of holiness when he saw that only the other nations exalted and glorified the Holy One blessed be he in the world but if you say that the Holy One blessed be he exalts himself in the world only for Israel this is certainly so for Israel is the base of the shine of the candle yet when the other nations come forth to acknowledge him through worship of the glory of the Holy One blessed be he then the base of the candle increases and is strengthened and then the Holy One. Blessed be he rules
Only with fear by concentrating his heart and mind with fear brokenheartedly and only then can he draw down the spirit of above and the needed wish 45 and if he does not direct his heart and mind in fear to that side then his mind cannot cling to it only with diminutive images and not even with all of them since they are ruled by those who require meditation of the heart and fear and even more so in the case of those supernal objects who require much more fear terror and intention 46. Jethro had to worship that side continuously whether his worshippers needed him or not so that that side would cleave to him when he needed it by long was connected with that sorcery as was stated before 47 due to an overpowering sense of fear within him when Job witnessed the miracles and mighty works the Holy One blessed be he had performed in Egypt he returned to Egypt to worship the Holy One blessed be he in fear Jethro did not convert to the worship of the Holy One blessed be he until the exodus from Egypt all of the bonds and images that the Egyptians made were to no avail for still they departed and only when they drowned in the sea did Jethro convert to worship the Holy One blessed be he 48 Bilam did not repent or convert since the impurities of the other side still clung to him and yet he observed from a distance and prophesied through the impurities and the clinging to the other side for in the other side there is one small thread of light that surrounds it is it is written and a brightness was about it Yushchikal 127 and he saw through this small brightness from afar though not in all matters 49 and when he perceived this small streak of light it was as if from behind a wall and he spoke yet did not know what he said he perceived this light as if with the white part of the eye as when the eye rolls and one sees covered light yet does see and this is the secret of whose eyes are open Bimid bar 2415 and we learned that open have sat of Spelled with the Hebrew letter sin means closed have sat with the Hebrew letter same it can all pertains to the same thing 50 there can always be found a small streak of light that comes from the side of holiness as in most dreams where in the pile of straw there is one grain of wheat except for those minor images that are most unclean and it was in these that Bilam knew 51 happy is the lot of Moses who is high above all other supernal sanctities for he perceived that which no other Man on earth was ever given permission to observe and just as Bilam saw a small light fine and thin as if behind a wall from within the other side so through the great supernal light of holiness did Moses see below as if from behind a wall a fine streak of darkness and he did not see it always just as Bilam did not always see that light 52 happy is the lot of Moses a faithful prophet for it is written about him and an angel of Hashem appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush Shema 32 a bush refers to a clip of which was in holiness and was connected to it for all things connect one to another the pure and the impure there is no purity except from within impurity 53 and this is the principle of who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean of 144 the shell had clipa and the fruit are correlated one with the other and this clipa will never be broken or be gone until the dead rise from the dust and the clipa will be broken and the light will shine into the world without any covering from the inner part happy are the righteous in this world and in the world to come section 2 and her two sons three of the rabbis are wondering why the title verse says her sons instead of the sons of Moses their comprehension is corrected by Rabbi Shimon who tells them that the sons refer to belong to Jethro not Moses and that Jethro brought his whole family that they might enter under the wings of the Shechinahu was joined celestially with Moses 54 and her two sons Shema 183 Rabbi Shia said why are they called her sons and not the sons of Moses he answers because she raised them without her husband the Torah calls them her sons and not his sons Rabbi Yossi said even though they were the sons of Moses they were by a secret principle most certainly her sons because Rabbi Lazar said Moses united himself in another holy celestial place and it would not have been respectful to call them his sons now even though they were his sons because of the dignity of the place in which he united which was the Shechinah they were here called her sons afterwards they were called his sons what is the reason because when they reached Moses Moses was talking to the Shechinah later when he separated from the Shechinah and went out to meet his father-in-law and it is written and Jethro Moses' father-in-law came with his sons 555 Rabbi Shimon said Lazar Lazar I see in this portion that the beginning of your interpretation is quite proper but the ending is not the way you interpret it certainly because of the respect of the Shechinah who was joined celestially with Moses it is written her sons and though it is written and Jethro Moses' father-in-law came with his sons and his wife to Moses it states his sons which is inclusive and the words his sons refer to the sons of Jethro for after Moses came to him he had sons 56 and so it was with Jacob when he came to Laban and dwelt in his house Laban had sons also here when Moses dwelt with Jethro he too had sons and Jethro brought his whole family so they might all enter together under the wings of the Shechinah and Jethro said to Moses I your father-in-law Jethro am come to you and your wife and her two sons with her and it is not written your two sons what do we learn from this that Jethro had children as it is written and the children of the Kenite Moses' father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees showed him 116 and he left his sons with Moses section 3 and Jethro Moses' father-in-law came the discussion turns around the verse and many nations shall go and say come and let us go up to the mountain of Hashem and we learn that the mountain is symbolic of conversion to proselytize the soul 57 and Jethro Moses' father-in-law came Shemot 185 he opened the discussion with the verse and many nations shall go and say come and let us go up to the mountain of Hashem Yeshayot 23 this verse is explained in many places yet the time will come when the other nations will strive to come under the wings of the Shechinah let us go up all idol worshippers of the world pertain to descent but those who cleave to the Holy One blessed be he will achieve an ascent therefore it is written let us go up 58 the mountain of Hashem refers to Abraham as written as it is said to this day in the mount Hashem will appear bear sheath. 2214 for Abraham called it a mountain just as the mountain is abandoned property free to all who care for it so is this holy place the temple open to all those who desire it on earth to the house Yeshua 23 is Jacob who called this place a house as it is written this is no other than the house of Elohim Bereshit 2817 59 another interpretation though mountain and house pertain to the same grade one is higher than the other a mountain is for the rest of the nations who come to enter under its wings a house is to the nation of Israel like a wife to her husband in one household united in happiness it adheres to them like a mother over her children 60 come and behold what is written here regarding Jethro and Jethro Moses' father-in-law came with his sons and his wife to Moses into the wilderness he asks since it is written to Moses why does the verse add into the wilderness he answers what is important is what Jethro came to the desert for and what is it is a mountain of Elohim and it is a place for a stranger to convert therefore it is written to Moses into the wilderness to Moses to proselytize them and bring them under the wings of the Shechinah into the wilderness they would come for the mountain of Elohim is to proselytize the soul that is to receive from hence the nefesh of the convert 61 on account of this the location stands as a mystery called mountain and everyone who comes there is credited with the title a convert of righteousness we have explained that he is called a convert even though he united on high with the celestial and holy because he left his own country and kin he is called a convert he is called a convert of righteousness since he set up his dwelling in a place he did not know before which is in the Shechinah called righteousness section 4 this is the book we learned that the book in this is the book of the generations of Adam is actually two books an upper and a lower and comprises male and female together they also incorporate the secret of keep and remember lastly we are also told that the book refers to the secret of the features of human beings by which the descendants of man can be recognized 62 Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yossi were sitting and studying the Torah in Tiberius Rabbi Shimon passed before them he asked them with what are you occupied they answered him the verse which we have learned from our master he said to them which is that they responded that which is written this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that Elohim created man in the likeness of Elohim he made him Bereshit 51 and after all we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he showed to Adam all those generations that in the future will be born onto earth and all the leaders and all the sages that in the future will be present in each and every generation 63 and this is a secret we have learned this is the book namely there are two books there is an upper book and there is a lower book the lower book is called the book of the remembrance which means the book of that remembrance which is a certain righteous one namely is it called this Hebzeh and Malchut is his book in order not to separate them since they are always together and form one it is therefore written this Hebzeh is a book two levels which are one the principle of male
Male and female in one secret as it is stated this is a book which comprises male and female together as stated before when they together produced offspring they were openly called man Adam as is written the generations of Adam 66 after it was revealed from the first supernal mystery of the verse namely it was revealed that this is a book alludes to the supernal man whose generations are the souls and spirits of human beings as was mentioned before he created the lower man as it is written in the day that Elohim created man in the likeness of Elohim he made him in the likeness means Adam was like a mirror with figures that appear in it the figures do not stay fixed in the mirror for very long but fade away from it it is also here in the likeness of Elohim 67 another interpretation in the likeness of Elohim means the shape of the limbs of male and female in the secret of back and front the back is of the secret of keeper that is a feminine aspect it Front is the male in the secret of remember which is Z-E-I-R and on these all the commandments of the Torah depend 613 commandments of the Torah that are all inclusive we have learned that man was created after the creation and before the act of the divine chariot and one is dependent upon the other in the likeness of Elohim is in the exact shape of Malchut so it was explained to me by my master 68 more about this is a book of the generations of Adam is refers to the secret of the features of human beings the features with which to recognize the descendants of man and the hidden meanings of these human features the hair the forehead the eyes the face the lips the lines on the hand and the ears with these seven human beings can be recognized section 5 and you shall behold the secret of the hair the section describes the traits and motivations of persons with different types of hair we are told that the mysteries of the very types of hair are for those who are wise in Torah who recognize what is hidden in human beings and are in the image of Elohim it is they who sit in judgment 69 one is recognized by the hair all who have creased hair meaning curly hair that is swept upwards and does not hang down from the head is of an angry disposition his heart is wrinkled like a rag signifying his heart is full of fear his actions are not good in partnership one must stay away from him 70 if his hair is unusually smooth and hangs low then it is good to associate with him for gain is found within him in other words one benefits from an association with him however when he is alone that is without a companion it is not so there is no success with him he can keep secrets of great importance yet in secrets of minor importance he is not reliable his actions are sometimes good and sometimes not good 71 if his hair hangs low and is not smooth he has no fear in his heart he is a malicious person he desires good deeds and thinks well of them but he does not accomplish them when he reaches old age he returns to fear Hashem and his actions are proper and these things pertain to the secular world for then he is a malicious person and does not accomplish good deeds but in esoteric matters everyone benefits who associates with him do not reveal important secrets to him but he will safeguard minor secrets he can make big things from little things and his words will be heard with respect he is under the letter of Zayin. According to the letters taught by our master 72 if the hair is black and extremely shiny he will succeed in all his actions specifically in worldly matters this is Malchut called world and in commerce which is the abundance of Malchut according to the secret of the verse she is like the merchant ships Mishle 315 he is benevolent but he succeeds only when alone without an associate and whosoever joins him as an associate will not succeed for long but will have only immediate Success and that success shall fly from him. The secret is included in the letters A in 73. If his hair is black and not shiny at times he will be successful and at times he will not succeed. It is good to associate and work with him for a short time but not for a lengthy time for during lengthy times he tends to think so in order not to be parted from him. He is good for a short time. Such a one succeeds in Torah studies if he perseveres after it and others will likewise succeed by him. He can not keep secrets for a long time. He is mean-hearted. He shall see his enemies and they shall not prevail against him. He is mean-heads are hearted as in the esoteric principle of the letter Yud which is small and narrow have TZAR and he is not included in the letters A in as stated previously but the in letter Yud in the secret of small letter 74. If his hair is balding he will succeed in business but he is a swindler. There is a scarcity of food in his house on the surface it seems he fears. Sin but it is not so within and all this is so before he comes to old age but if he becomes bald in his old age he becomes the opposite of what he was before for good or for bad 75 the stated words refer to hair balding on the forehead between the eyes at the place where the tefillin are placed however at another spot on the head it is not so he is not a swindler but an evil gossiper one who gossips quietly without raising his voice at times he is fierce and at times he does not thus he is under the secret of the letters A and when it includes the letter yet 76 until this point the mysteries of the very types of hair are for those who sit in judgment know the ways and mysteries of the Torah recognize what is hidden in human beings and are in the image of Elohim in whom this nomenclature Elohim is concealed which is explained in many ways section 6 and you shall behold the secret of the forehead this part examines the shape size and slope of the forehead together with the minute details of the furrows in the forehead it uses these facts to explain the persons who have these sets of characteristics the secret of the forehead is under the letter none that is Gura 77 the secret of the forehead this is under the letter none which is Gura which is the perfection of the letters A in which is Malchut since Malchut was built from the left column which is Gura sometimes the none is included in the letters A in and at times it stands by itself a forehead which is small rises sharply and is not round signifies a man who is not settled in his mind he thinks he is wise but knows little he is frightened in spirit and has a serpent's tongue 78 if the furrows in his forehead are large and are not joined one with the other and if when he speaks these same furrows are formed but not joined while the other lines in his forehead are all joined one with the other then one is not to associate with him for more than a brief period and not for a lengthy time whatever he does and thinks is only for his own advantage and he has no concern for the benefit of others he cannot keep a secret at all of him it is said a talebearer reveals secrets Mishle 1113 his words are not meaningful this is a mystery of the letter none which is included in the letters A and he does not have a reliable disposition 79 if his forehead is small and rounded he makes intelligent observations yet he is fearful in spirit his love is joyous he is kind-hearted to everyone he has interest in many things if he studies the Torah he will become quite wise 80 if three large wrinkles are in his forehead at the time when he speaks and three wrinkles are near one eye and three wrinkles are near the other eye and he cries at the time he is angry then he is better than he appears to be whether it be in deeds or in words he throws over his shoulders all secular matters and cares not for them he will have success in the study of the Torah in fact anyone who engages with him will profit even in secular matters for which he attaches no importance at times he clings to the will of the Holy One blessed be he and at times he does not in legal matters he has no success he stays far away from legal judgments and this is the secret of the letter none by itself not included in the Zayin since it is not included in the letter Zayin he keeps his distance from the law and does not stay there rather love is his side 81 if his forehead is not rounded but is large this is a man who whether he stands or walks always bends his head this type can be divided into two aspects of madness one aspect is a noticeable madness evident to all who observe and recognize it he is a fool 82 if he has four large wrinkles on his forehead and sometimes when he speaks they appear on his forehead while at other times the skin on his forehead is stretched so the wrinkles are not seen there are wrinkles that are seen and then other large Wrinkles close to his eyes he laughs freely without reason and his mouth is large this man has no worth and is of the other side madness is concealed in him and people do not notice it and he gets wiser in everything he does even in the study of Torah but not for its own sake but only to boast before people and his custom is to be clandestine and conceited he appears to be pious but is not so everything he says is not for the sake of the Holy One blessed be he but for man his thoughts and his behavior are for external appearance to draw attention to himself this is a mystery of the letter none which is included in the letters A in 83 if the forehead is rounded and large he is clever he remembers everything he acquires wisdom from whatever he works hard at and even without a trainer to teach him he succeeds at whatever he endeavors however in money matters sometimes he succeeds and sometimes he does not from little things he can infer great things he is called wise he does not concern himself with mundane matters even when he knows that he may be embarrassed by not concerning himself with these matters he pays no attention to them he is soft hearted 84 if there are two large wrinkles set high upon his forehead one wrinkle over one eye and one wrinkle over another eye and there are also three large wrinkles in his forehead those above his eyes and apart from them a lower
encircles the eyes from the outside and the way the eye rests in its fullness and that it is not immersed deeply in its socket such a one is not deceptive and has not a trace of fraudulence 86 there are four colors to be found in the eyes a there is the white outside that circles the eye common to every person that is there is no difference in this aspect from person to person being closed within it is a black color that encircles and the black and white merge together which alludes to Chisit and Bureau which include one with the other see within this is a greenish color alluding to typhoid included in the black D the innermost is the pupil of the eye which is a black dot this alludes to Malchute this is a person who is always laughing and full of cheer he has good intentions but his intentions are never accomplished since they slip from his mind he is occupied with worldly matters but when occupied with spiritual matters he will succeed therefore he should be encouraged to occupy himself with the Torah for he will succeed in 87 if his eyebrows are thick inclining downwards and if in the color of his eyes there are red lined impressions these impressions are called small letters of the eyes because when these colors of the eye shine in the light the light causes the letters to be revealed to those who judge together with the other small impressions this is in the shape of the letter same again is included in the letter hey, 88 green eyes that are Surrounded in white with the green blended in the white implies that he is a merciful man yet he thinks always for his own benefit the harm of others does not concern him at all 89 if the black color is not noticeable in his eyes he is greedy but not in an evil way but if an opportunity should arise for him to accomplish evil he will not turn from it he can be trustworthy when speaking of things he knows yet not trustworthy and things he does not know he can keep a secret as long as it is a secret until he hears a secret at another place once he hears about it he reveals everything and it is no longer a secret with him at all because nothing he does is perfect the eye color encircled with white and green is the secret of the letter a when included with the letters a and same at 90 if his eyes are yellowish green he has madness about him and because of this madness his mouth speaks in a bombastic manner and he carries a self-importance about himself and whoever attacks him conquers him he is not worthy of the Torah secret since in his heart he cannot keep silent about such secrets and he reveals them to others so that through them he can make himself seem a bigger man this is the mystery of the letter hey which is only included in the letters a and is removed from the letter same it is because he conducts himself with pride that he is far removed from the letter same it cannot approach it when he speaks he produces many wrinkles on his forehead 91 one with white eyes encircled lightly with green has an angry disposition but for the most part he is kind hearted however when he is full of anger he has no love in him whatsoever and becomes cruel he cannot be trusted with a secret this belongs to the mystery of the letter hey which is included in the letter same it 92 he with eyes that are green and white together with a little black color in them can be trusted with secrets and is successful in utilizing them if he begins with Success then he will continue to succeed further his enemies cannot prevail against him and he rules over them entirely and they are submissive to him this is under the sign of the letter CAF which is included in the letter same because he rules once he starts to rule thus far are the mysteries of the eyes which are revealed to the wise section 8 and you shall behold the secret of the face the secret of the face is for those who master inner wisdom we learn that the features of the face are recognized not by outward impressions but rather from the spirit and the impressions of inner secrets the impressions of all 22 letters are engraved into the spirit and these impressions enter into the face to be seen only by those with wisdom also the spirit projects the image of the face of a man a lion an ox and an eagle all for a time 93 the secret of the face is for those who master inner wisdom the features of the face are not recognized by the outward Impressions on the skin of the face as was said of the forehead but by the impressions of inner secrets for the features of the face are inverted and appear by force of impressions of the face which are concealed in the spirit that dwells within and from the spirit the features of the face appear outside which are recognizable only to the wise of internal wisdom as mentioned above 94 the features of the face are recognized from the spirit there is in man a spirit on which the secret of the letters are engraved and all 22 letters are enclosed in that spirit according to the seasons of man the impressions of these very same letters enter into the face and as these letters come up so does the face appear with these engraved impressions according to the time of man but this appearance does not last long for these features soon pass only men of wisdom see them and they exist never to be forgotten by them 95 there is a place which is called the world to come which is by it. From there issues forth the secret of the Torah which is Zeir Anpin that emanates from Bunda with all its letters consisting of 22 letters that comprise everything and the river that goes forth from Eden which is Zeir Anpin receives everything when the spirits and the soul soar from it all are stamped with the imprint of these same letters and everything emerges in this manner therefore the spirit of man is stamped with the imprint of these letters and the imprint forms a shape on the face of man 96 Rabbi Shimon said to him if so the image of the mother of the spirit namely Melchut is not shaped from within that spirit as the letters come from the father of the spirit namely Zeir Anpin as mentioned they replied to him so we heard from our master that the form of letters comes from above from Zeir Anpin and the form of the mother namely Melchut containing four faces lion ox and so on is formed in that spirit below and the form of the letters that come from Zeir Anpin are Concealed within and the form of IMA projects outwardly 97 the form of IMA which is Malchut is the face of a man the face of a lion the face of an ox and the face of an eagle and the spirit projects the image of all of them for a time for everything belonging on the side of the spirit projects itself to the outside and when it becomes visible is immediately concealed all these forms which become visible and are designed in the shape of letters come from Zeir and even though they are concealed from within as previously mentioned these four forms are visible for a time to those who have eyes to see and these are men of wisdom who comprehend by the mystery of wisdom how to contemplate them 98 the first form is as follows when a man walks in the way of truth those who know the secret of their master discern him because the spirit within is established in him and projects the design to the outside which includes the full design that form becomes the form of man this form is the most perfect of all other designs and this is the design that passes for a time before the eyes of the wise hearted when they look at his appearance from the outside at that face that is before them the eyes of the heart are moved to love him 99 four letter signs are impressed on it one vein is conspicuous on his face in a depression that is to say it is not projected on the outside like a conspicuous group from the right side there is another vein that includes and ceases to others that are attached to it from the left side of the face these four signs are the four letters i and bob dalit and top have a deadly testimony the sign i and is the vein on the right side and is conspicuous in its sunken position the dalit and the two letters attached to it bob and top form a vein which includes two other veins on the left side of the face this is the secret of the phrase this he ordained in joseph for testimony tell him 816 for everyone who saw him loved him in there Heart and in this love he was perfected 100 in the seat of David the colors are reversed this is why Samuel heard as it is written look not on his countenance I Shmuel 167 since the other side was in Eliph which was not so in David for the features of David were covered for the forms of the other side were included in his own features and it is the form of the other side that is seen first passing over the eyes temporarily and frightening the heart yet afterwards a comely person and Hashem is with him Abed 19 this gives testimony about him 101 the image of man includes all forms and all forms include as such a man is not frightened in spirit in times of anger he is calm his words are calming and he is quickly appeased 102 in the seat of David where the image of the other side is seen at first and passes briefly before the eyes as previously discussed he is self-controlled in anger and quickly appeased yet he must guard a serpentine hatred in the end for it is that side that brought this about surrounding itself on all sides until it takes its revenge but the fruit that is enclosed in its shell and the heart become righteous this is true for righteous people but in evil people the original evil form is not turned aside from them being fully attached to them 103 this is the second form if a man does not walk much in the ways of wickedness turning aside from his path and returning to his master this means that a good spirit is beginning to rest upon him overpowering the first impurities that were upon him it is projected outside observed by the eyes temporarily in the form of a powerful lion at the time when this image is seen this appearance causes the spirit of a powerful lion to prevail in his heart that is to say his heart prevails over the evil side 104 with reference to him who has the image of a powerful lion when they discern his face afterwards it is a face that the heart does not love immediately but an instant
The other letters which are Reshba bet are on the left side of the face and even though other veins are seen in his face they do not protrude on the outside as these do except when he walks on the path of evil, then these also protrude 107 this appearance is different in one who is from the seed of David first he appears in the form of man then that of a lion he then separates from the other side and in all things he is the reverse of other men 108 this is the third form of a man. Walks in a path that is not correct and his ways lead him away from the path of the Torah that Holy Spirit is removed from him and another spirit is seen in him another image which is protruding observable to the eyes of the wise hearted as the form of an ox at the moment that he is observed by the wise of heart they pass the image of an ox across their hearts and contemplate it 109 on the right side of his face there are three red kernels of wild crocus and these red veins are small and there are three on the left side of his face these are the letters which are prominent in him one vein from the three on the right and the left side is small and spherical and two other thin veins above are also circular the eyes of this person are sunken into his forehead 110 this is the secret of these letters one of the three is the letter caf the other two veins form the letters resh and tof so it is with the three veins on the left side one of them is the letter caf and the others resh and tof and these letters form that which is written the side of their countenance have hakarat caf resh tof witnesses against them mishayah 39 and these are the letters that protrude in the face more than all other sinews but if he returns repenting turning away from the left and coming to the side of the right then that spirit yields and the spirit of holiness prevails then these veins sink and others protrude on the outside as we have studied 111 it is the opposite with it Seed of David the image of the lion is seen first and afterwards it turns to the image of an ox two dark veins are visible in his face one from the right and one from the left and these are the letters one was called Dalit and the other called Ayan and in everything it is the opposite from other men 112 the fourth image is the form of a man always standing ready to amend a secret past and doing no more damage this is seen by the wise of heart in the form of an eagle his spirit is a spirit of weakness he does not exhibit on his face letters that protrude outwardly since these were lost and sunk in his early days since they left him they are no longer protruding 113 this is the secret of him his eyes do not sparkle with brightness even when he is joyful nor at those times when he trims the hair on his head and his beard this is because his spirit does not shine in those letters and the sparks of light which he had at the beginning have now declined it cannot be Observed when one looks at his face because there are no protruding letters as was mentioned before and this is a secret as it is written so I praise the dead that are already dead more than the living that are yet alive. Kahila 42 however pertaining to the seat of David the council also secret of Hashem is with them that fear him and he will reveal to them his covenant. Tehillim 2514 114 in the spirit of man letters are impressed as we have learned which protrude through to the outside on the face and this wisdom has been given to the wise to comprehend and to recognize the spirit can be approached through the concealed significance of the phrase this is the book bear sheet 511 everything is approached through this mystery except for facial features which we judge by another method according to the rule of the spirit or man of spirit happy are those wise ones who are privileged to be entrusted with this knowledge until this point is the secret of faces. Section 9 And you shall behold the secret of the lips. The secret of the lips is in the letter P. And we read of the qualities of men with different types of lips. 115 from here forward is the secret of the lips of the letter P, which is included in the secret of the letter Samic. Big lips denote a man who spreads malicious gossip without shame or fear. He is a person who causes dissension and slander between one another, that is to say, between man and his neighbor. He is one that sows discord among brethren. Mishlei 619. And he cannot keep a secret when he endeavors in the Torah. He can keep hidden secrets, yet he still is a malicious gossiper without any fear in his heart. 116. The sign the letter P is included in the letter Resh, but not in the letter Samic. Such a one seems to be righteous, but he has no fear of transgressing. One should have no dealings with him because whatever he does proceeds out of his mouth alone and not from his body. 117 lips that are dry. And shriveled and nothing signify a man with a quick temper he is malicious he is intolerant with everything openly he spreads malicious gossip without shame at times he is frivolous and scoffs at others this is a man from whom you must remain at a distance 118 if his beard becomes full according to evil speech such a one speaks openly to everyone he has no shame and he concerns himself with causing strife yet he is successful in worldly matters he gazes upon his enemies and he winks with his eyes of it 13 concerning him it is said a wicked man hardens his face Mishlei 2129 he stands under the mystery of the letter p alone when it is not included in the same at all yet at times it is joined to the letter rush it is included in this letter rush section 10 and you shall behold the secret of the ears the size and shape of ears is correlated to certain human characteristics the ears being of the letter yet from here we are told that the Zohar We'll speak about the mysteries of the verse. This is the book in its supreme spiritual level in the context of times and seasons of this world. 119. The mystery of the ears. One whose ears are large has foolishness in his heart and madness in his spirit. One whose ears are small and preserve a proper shape. When awakened, his wise hearted, he will concern himself with everything. This type is under the letter Yud, which is included in all other letters. 120. Until this point is the secret of it. Shapes of man from here forward, we will concern ourselves with other mysteries of our master Rabbi Shimon, which have no standing with regard to the countenance. Rather, we will endeavor to learn the mysteries of the verse. This is the book in its supreme spiritual level in the context of times and seasons of this world, of which until now we were not worthy of knowing. 121. Rabbi Shimon said, My children, you are worthy in this world, and you are worthy in the world to come. Blessed are my eyes. That will be worthy to see this when I enter the world to come for the sake of my soul. I call to Adikim an ancient of days. This verse, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Tehillim 235 and the Holy One blessed be. He calls to us. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faithfulness may enter in Yeshua 262 section 11. And you shall behold the secret of the lines of the hands. We are told that God impressed spiritual mysteries upon the palm and fingers of a person. The mystery of the palm is of the letter CAF. The skin bones and sinews are compared to things in the supernal realms. Returning to a discussion of the face, we read that it is only possible to discern a person fully when the face is without anger, but is shining and serene. Much reference is made in this whole section to the firmament, the heavens, and the stars. At the end, we learned that Moses had no need of these signs. By which the wise recognized the wise for he was informed by the Holy Spirit. King Solomon knew these things and was able to judge because of his throne. But King Messiah will judge by the fragrance and these three were able to judge the world without witnesses. All others who are wise in these signs must warn people and try to heal them. 122 They opened the discussion with a discourse on the verse and they had the hands of a man under their wings. Yashis Kalitin this verse the friends explained. Are the hands to receive penitents who return to the Holy One. Blessed be he the hands of a man are the forms and spiritual mysteries which the Holy One. Blessed be he impressed upon man and arranged in his fingers outwardly and inwardly and in his palm that is the palm of his hand. 123 When the Holy One. Blessed be he created man he arranged in him all the forms of the supernal mysteries of the world above which is mine and all the images of the lower mysteries of the world below which is. Malchut and all is carved in man and found in the image of Elohim because he is called the creation of the palm which is the palm of the Holy One blessed be he 124 and the mystery of the palm have caf is of the letter which is called caf as it is written and Elohim created man in his own image Bereshit 127 this is the secret of the letter caf this letter has supernal secrets and spiritual forms the caf which is the palm of the hand contains ten sayings from right and left five in the right palm and five in the left palm and all are one in one secret the right and the left are united into one 125 it is written I will also smite my one palm upon the other Yeshua 2122 its explanation is that this one and that one shall be in conflict so that blessings will be removed from this world and the pride of Israel will be given over to the other nations this is because from the unification of right and left there continue from the left the three first fire to Israel which is their pride when they are divided the other nations suckle from the left column and the pride of Israel is given over to the heathen nations and when they are joined together it is written one spoon have caf of ten shekels of gold
What is man in his essence? And he answers, If you think that man is nothing more than skin, flesh, bones, and sinews, this is not so, for certainly man is but his soul, and skin, flesh, bones, and sinews are all only the clothing, these are the implements of man and not man himself. And when man passes away, he divests himself of all these implements that he wore 127, the skin with which man has been clothed, and all these bones and sinews are all in the mystery of the supernal wisdom corresponding to that which is above. And he explains that the skin corresponding to that which is above is as we have learned in connection with the curtains, as it is written, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Tehillim 1041 Ram skins dyed red and badger skins. Shema 255. These are the garments up above that cover the garments which are like the extensions of the heavens, which is the outer garment. The curtains are the inner garments corresponding to the skin that protects the flesh, and thus it is. Said who stretches out the heavens like a curtain as the curtains are the inner garments and on these are the heavenly garments from the outside 128 the bones and the sinews are the chariots and all the hosts which are appointed inward that is they are all an inner aspect and the first three spirot of the outer part of the grave for the sinews are the neshama of the garment and the bones are an aspect of shaya of the garment and all of these are garments to that which is inward which is also the mystery of the supernal man who is the innermost to them 129 the same secret is found here below man is the inner of the innermost and his garments correspond to that which is above the bones and the sinews are similar to what we have said regarding the chariots and hosts that are called bones and sinews the flesh is a covering to those hosts and chariots that are called bones and sinews and appears itself outwardly to them and this is the secret that the flesh is being Drawn from him to the other side, the skin which covers all corresponds to the firmaments which cover everything, and all of these are garments to be worn by him. The innermost being the mystery of man, and all is a secret for what is below corresponds to the above, and thus it is written, and Elohim created man in his own image, and the image of Elohim bear sheet 197 for the mystery of man below corresponds entirely to the secret above 130 in this firmament up above which covers everything. Impressions were set in it to show and know through these impressions things and concealed secrets, these are the shapes of the stars and constellations recorded and fixed in this firmament which covers externally. Similarly, the skin which covers man from the outside is like the firmament that covers all having lines and impressions, which is considered to be an aspect of the stars and constellations of this skin. One may perceive in them hidden things and deep mysteries of the stars and Constellations that are the impressions and lines in the skin through which the wise of heart may study them and discern the secrets hidden within as we have stated and this is the secret of the astrologers the stargazers Yeshua 4713 131 and this can be discerned only when the face shines and remains without anger for only then can we observe and discern as mentioned previously at the time when anger rules over man another judgment is applied and why was this principle not given to us? For our use it is possible to know at the time when judgment rules the firmament 132 but the face is observed in its truthful way when the face shines and man is secure then these impressions are seen in a truthful way and with this discernment one is able to judge better with clarification although there are many styles the wise can utilize to discern 133 the lines of the hands and the lines of the fingers from the inside are all set under other secrets with which to discern. Concealed matters and these are the stars that shine so as to reveal the interiors of the constellations in high ministers 134 there are supernal secrets in the fingers the nails of the fingers cover them from the outside they are explained through these inner secrets that are manifested on the outside these contain secrets to those wizards who contemplate the fingernails in the light of other principles that govern them and these magicians defile that place 135 in the nails there are times when little white stars shine from them that is little white spots are seen in the nails which are similar to birthmarks the shape of lentils and they are sunk in the nails as if nailed to a board and they are different to those other white spots that are not sunken but are fixed above on the nails those that are not sunken have no meaning but those that are white and immersed like birthmarks the shape of lentils have meaning and they are a good omen for man and he will succeed during this time or if a judgment was imposed upon him he will be rescued from it 136 the lines of the hands are among the supernal mysteries along with the fingers from the inside that is not on the side of the nails but the side of the flesh in the hands there are large lines and small thin upper lines in the right and the little finger on the right there are thin impressions this finger is fixed permanently on acts by the other side 137 in this finger we find lines that are formed when the finger is folded during the closing of the hand we do not observe these except if added to by other lines if two other lines are added to the line that the finger formed when doubled over a way of opportunity will not be open to him and if he does initiate an opportunity he will not succeed 138 in the case where the lines are fixed lengthwise between impressions between the impressions formed when the finger is folded over at the time when the skin of the finger is pulled backwards and with all this these recognizable impressions remain and are not erased due to the pulling of the skin such a person will succeed in his ways the sign for this is three lines in width and four in length this is the secret of Zayin from the small letters for in the Hebrew alphabet there are three styles of letters large medium and small and the Zayin here to mentioned refers to the smallest style of letters 139 if there is one impression that is a lengthwise line and there are two widthwise lines then along his travels he will hear of things in the near future but they will not benefit him if there are impressions that are four lengthwise lines and four widthwise lines an opportunity will come his way and through hard effort the results will be to his benefit and this is the mystery of Zayin from the medium sized letters of the Hebrew alphabet those between the large letters and the smaller letters 140 if there are five small impressions in width at the bottom end for in width at the top and for lengthwise he has peace in the house and he is lazy an opportunity may present itself for him but he does not wish to take advantage of it had he taken advantage he would have succeeded along this path but he takes no advantage of it because he is lazy and this is the mystery of the small zay in 141 the middle finger is the finger that stands to show if he should manifest the action of which he thought if one line is fixed lengthwise between lines at width he thinks thoughts but they are gone from him he fears and he does not carry them out and these thoughts amount to nothing 142 if two lines are fixed lengthwise even when the skin of the finger is pulled backwards and they are not cancelled due to the pull of the skin he has no real thoughts but only thinks superficial thoughts of the moment and accomplishes them but he does not have contemplative thoughts rather impulsive and petty thoughts but no contemplative thoughts 143 if there are three impressions in length and two or three impressions in width after he stretches the skin of the finger backwards he is a man who is wise and contemplative and all those thoughts that are on the side of the holy one blessed be he will be fulfilled by his hands but not so with other thoughts 144 if there are four or five impressions in length after the skin of the finger is stretched as previously stated and they rest on three or four or even two or more impressions of the lines in with such a person has thoughts which tend to be evil and he glories in such thoughts and when the beard and eyebrows are red he thinks evil and glories in it for a brief time he is cunning and he always yields to these evil characteristics thus he succeeds after a brief period he dies 145 the remedy for this is repentance and then we find three or four impressions resting on two that is three or four impressions in length resting on two impressions in width since according to the habit of man lines are changed from time to time the secret is derived from the verse that brings out their host by number he calls them all by names because of the greatness of his might and because he is strong in power Yeshua 4026 146 as the holy one blessed be he changes hosts and seasons in the stars in the heavens this day so and another day thus all according to the supernal man who is the inner aspect of his actions as they appear in these heavens the same is seen on the skin of man below since his skin which covers everything is a firmament 147 and all is according to the kind of inner man who is at times under judgment and at times under mercy this is exactly the same side outside over the firmament that at times appears in this mode and at other times in that mode this is also similar to that man as we have stated previously that is at times seen on his skin in this way and at other times in that way this is the secret side of the letters a and when it is Included in the letter yet 148 and these secrets are in the fingers of the right hand, the little finger and the large one that is the middle finger the indication is but here the small as well as the great Devarim 117 these two fingers are connected to these secrets these are the mysteries which we have learned from our master from the secrets of Rav Yesesaba the elder from now and onward other lines are all called descendants which refers to the descendants
Hey Samak P.E. Resh Sadik has been added the secrets to the wise in heart are Resh Sayin Hey Samak final P.E. five letters in five gates for the gain of wisdom by understanding 150 the first gate is Resh in the hand there are thin lines and great lines and all these lines mingle with one another the great lines that are in the hand when they are two in length and two in width and merge with each other are the secret of the letter Hey and the letter Resh it rejects the letters A and N. Seizes these two letters at its width it takes the letter Hey at its length it takes the letter Resh it signed is Hey Resh 151 there are those who have similar lines to those on the right hand also in the left hand particularly with the great lines but it is with small lines that the right hand receives while the left hand does not receive for the right hand receives one thin line in length above and one thin line below which is seized between two great lines that are found there in the with there is one thin line that touches below two lines resting upon it but in the left hand this is not so thus the secret is in the right hand and not the left 152 this is a man who adores being at home at times and on the road at times his heart is not at ease with either when he is at home he yearns for the road and when he is on the road he yearns for home he is always successful on the road and at times at home this person is successful in the Torah and in the mysteries of it. Torah if he puts effort into them he gazes on his enemies many will benefit from him he is lazy in worldly matters yet if he is stimulated from below then they will stimulate to improve him from above he gains merit through his words he is precious and spends his money he has a good eye his prayers are heard in regards to money he has ups and downs that is in his possessions 153 there are times when his heart is broken before his master and then we find three small lines crossing the thin. Line that was added to the two lines in width and this is the secret the hay is joined with the rush he gives a brief review of the words which is good for the memory it is the road it is home it is delight it is sadness it is beneficial he is lazy he is good he is precious and scatters his money it implies a broken heart and the return to his master 154 the second gate is Zayin in the right hand in the part that accepts and receives namely in the palm of the hand there are impressions when three great lines in width and two great lines are found and one of those in length touches two in width while the other one does not touch them this implies a defect in the seed either from the side of the father or the side of the mother 155 and then we find below the three lines in width two thin lines that touch them from below this signifies a man who amends his actions in front of other people yet his heart is not true and at the time of his old age he repents too. Correct his actions, then we find the two lines in length touch those in with this one with that one and two others thin lines with them in the middle, lengthwise, and also three thin lines in width, and this is the mystery of the Zayin that is linked to the letter Resh 156 when he reaches old age and repents as we have said he is corrected under the secret of the letter Resh and is joined with the letter Zayin afterwards when matters have been corrected he is always in silence and all. His actions are secreted but he is not established fully in this because this defect which is still in his seed has not given him up and stimulates him to evil 157 but after this defective seed gives up then we find four and five lines in his right hand four lines in length and five in width and the secret is Zayin that is linked to the letter Zayin hey, this implies that at times he succeeds in matters and at times he does not succeed he will succeed in Torah learning and toward the end. Of his life he will even succeed even in financial matters 158 the third gate is hay in the right hand when there are five lines in width and three in length and there is a middle line recognized especially among the three lines in length this is the secret of the letter hay which is supported by the letter samic 159 if this middle line from the three lines in length is found to enter and to touch those five lines in width it signifies a man who is sad and angry in his house but this is not so with other men he is a miser in his house he is angry and hungry yet at other times he is not outside of his house he is not this way he succeeds in worldly matters when he is occupied with torah he observes a little and then goes back to it he is truthful but not always and at those times that he is not truthful he appears to be truthful he is successful in judgments he is faithful to the secrets of the torah and this is the sign of the letter hay and is linked to the letter samic 160 if there are four lines in width and five lines in length and two of those in length enter in the midst of those four in width it signifies a man who is happy in his house but appears to be of sad heart on the outside yet this is not true for as soon as he speaks with people he shows happiness and speaks with intent 161 three small lines enter in the midst of those lines in length and this person has a black spot on his body and three hairs hang from this spot the spot is round and a break is in the top of the spot this impression is called by the wise in heart who know these mysteries the name of eagle head this impression is sometimes seen between his shoulders and at times on his right arm and at times on his right hand on his fingers 162 if this impression which we call eagle head is in a manner that is well set then he will be raised to wealth and honor but if this eagle head is turned backwards he will at times be worthy of children as he grows older he will be Worthy of great wealth and great honor more than when he was a youth he will also succeed in the Torah if he occupies himself with it. 163 the eagle head looks black at times and at times it is a color that is only slightly red for it was not dyed much and we look at the hair hanging from it for at times they are straight and everything is under one sign and judged according to the same law. 164 if this red color is significantly red and maintains its color and if it is only a brief time since it became colored and since these colors are found shining at times and at other times are dim if this red color becomes bright and shining and he has in his left hand three lines in length and three lines in width and there is one thin line on those width lines and one thin line on those length lines and in the right hand one thin line alone is added to the width then he is a man who slept with a menstruant woman and did not repent to his master 165 and when he repents it. Lines in the left hand remain and the line that was added in the right hand is gone and the red color is also gone for the brightness does not shine as much and at times even though he repents the redness is not removed for a time this is in the mystery of the letter hay and the letter samic is removed and instead the letter final zadik has been substituted and the letter hay is linked to final zadik this person quickly needs a correction of the spirit it is incumbent upon the wise of heart who observe him to say to him go and heal yourself 166 three lines in length and one in width is the secret of the letter hay by itself and at times it is linked to the mystery of the letter zay and this signifies a man who lusts and is greedy for profit in the world and if not then he chases women with the lust for committing adultery and even though he lusts and is greedy for gain in the world this is not removed from him and he is not ashamed his eyes are sunken and he speaks with them that is at the time of speaking he winks with his eyes 167 if he returns to his master the lines are changed, three in width and one in length the two thin lines remain this implies that he desires his wife more and attaches himself to her one especially thin line enters between two thin lines then the letter he joins itself to the letters a in 168 if one line is in length and four lines are in width and three thin lines remain on the same one that is in length and one line on it. Four that are in width on the left arm are three thin lines that just appeared a few days previously and a single hair hangs on that one that is at their top and he is one eager to commit adultery with his neighbor's wife he is malicious he frightens with his left eye without uttering a word and completes, that is he completes his work and does not have to speak because he is malicious returning to his master does not concern him afterwards a serpent or a red man will kill him 169 if. There are four in length and three in width and those lines that go up are removed from him this implies he breaks his heart before his master and repents this is under the principle of the letter P e and is joined with the letter A of these it is written peace peace both for far and near Yeshua 5719170 until this point are all the secrets of the generations of Adam which is the history of those born to him from time to time according to the nature of man happy is a lot of those who sit before my master Rabbi Shimon who are worthy to hear from his lips the secrets of the Torah happy are those in this world and happy are those in the world to come Rabbi Shimon said happy are you friends that no secret has disappeared from you how many supernal places await you in the world to come 171 he opened with the quote moreover lit and you shall provide lit behold out of all the people able men such as fear Elohim men of truth hating unjust gain Shemot 1821 he asks but it is written you shall behold instead of you shall choose and he answers you shall behold according to sight in one in the image of man in those six characteristics that we previously discussed and everything is in that verse you shall behold is the first of the hair out of all the people is the second of the brow able men is third of the face such as fear elohim is the fourth of the eyes men of truth is the fifth of the lips hating unjust gain is sixth of the hands and
him and that is how he knew therefore Moses had no need to observe and ponder all this since he knew instantly 174 similarly King Solomon also knew he knew through his throne for the Holy Spirit rested upon it trembling and fear overcame everyone who came near his throne and he could judge them without witnesses since there were images in his throne the image would not if anyone approached with a falsehood and King Solomon would know that he came with a lie because of this the fear of the throne fell upon all and all were found righteous before him 175 King Messiah will judge by the fragrance as it is written and his delightless smell shall be in the fear of Hashem and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes Yeshua 113 and these three namely Moses King Solomon and King Messiah judge the world without witnesses and without warning the rest of the world must judge by word of witnesses and by word of the Torah it is incumbent upon those who are wise in these images to warn people and give them succor and to heal them happy are they in this world and happy are they in the world to come section 12 and you shall behold the secret of secrets rabbi shimon tells us of the secrets of the book of adam and the secret book of king solomon he reveals that the tree of life is the book so that the concealed wisdom was transmitted to adam in the shapes and visages of people solomon inherited this wisdom and wrote it in his book while moses learned the wisdom from the shechen rabbi shimon reiterates that the six aspects of man to be observed are the hair the eyes the nose the lips the face and the hands especially the lines in the hands he compares the skin that covers everything to the skin of the firmament with which god created the stars and constellations and says that the appearance of the stars and planets are ever changing as is the appearance of the skin of man this is followed by another long description of the six Aspects and how they manifest in people of different character in the mission we learned that when the time came to create man the light was bestowed from Keter to Bani to Zer Enpin and thus brought forth the souls of man Ruash is the result of the mating of Zer Enpin and Malchut and it takes on hues from the sun and moon from water and fire wind and earth Rabbi Shimon explains further about the creation of the body of man and the Nefesh and the Ruash and says that the actions of it Nefesh inside the body appear on the skin outside Rasid Raisin, Secret of Secrets 176 Moreover lit and you shall provide lit behold out of all the people Shemot 1821 This is the book of the generations of Adam Vershi 51 which is to say this book is from those books that are sealed and are profoundly deep Rabbi Shimon said I have raised my hand in prayer to the one who created the world even though in this scriptural verse the ancient ones revealed higher hidden things yet we must further study and ponder the secrets of the book of Adam as from that point continues the secret book of King Solomon 177 he expounds upon the verse this is the book this indicates that everything is dependent on it this is the tree of life that is Tiferet this reveals and there is none other to reveal this is as it is written this month shall be to you the beginning of months Shemot 122 which means that this refers to Nisan and no other month and also this reveals and none other 178 it is this book that we contemplate to reveal the generations of man itis a tree that reveals the generations of Adam that will bear fruit that is that will give birth to souls to bring them out into the world this is the book from which may be known the concealed and profound wisdom that was transmitted to the first man in the shapes of people this wisdom was transmitted to King Solomon who inherited it and wrote it in his book 179 we have been taught that Moses found this difficult until the Shechina came and taught it to him she perceived and sorted out all those people who could be seen and recognized by their countenances and Moses thereby learned this wisdom and was brought into it therefore it is written and you shall behold that of which it is written and you are the same and your years shall never end Tehillim 127 and you do preserve them all Nechmiah 96 and you Hashem are a shield for me Tehillim 34 just as in all these words and you I to be explained as the Shechina so here and you shall behold refers to the Shechina 180 and you namely the Shechina shall behold and observe it you and none other to know and to contemplate 600,000 in six aspects you are to contemplate the images of man and to clearly know this wisdom these are the hair the eyes the nose the lips the face and the hands especially the lines in the hands of the six aspects it is written and you shall behold 181 and you shall behold that is in the hair the creases on the brow and the eyebrows out of all the people is to be interpreted as with eyes in the membranes in the eyes and in the folds under the eyes able men refers to those who have the strength to stand in the palace of the king they are recognized by the brightness on their faces by their face by the wrinkles on their faces and by the marks in their beards hating on just gain refers to the hands and the lines in the hands and the marks in them all these six aspects implied here in the scriptural verse were transmitted to moses to contemplate and from which to learn concealed wisdom this wisdom is inherited by those who are properly righteous and truthful happy is their lot 182 it is written you have clothed me with skin and flesh of 1011 in a similar fashion the holy one blessed be he made levels upon levels above these upon those concealed ones within others concealed hosts and chariots the one over the other similarly he Made in all these arteries and tendons that he made in them level upon land these are the bones that exist on higher levels and those of the levels are called flesh being the levels of the domain of the end of all flesh and all these benefit from the smoke of the flesh from the scent of the sacrificial offerings and from others things associated with flesh and above all these is the skin this is the hide that covers everything 183 the holy one blessed be he created the stars and it constellations with the skin of the firmament as they are the signs of the heavens so that we may observe them to know the wisdom from them similarly the holy one blessed be he created man with marks and wrinkles in the skin of the face of man which are similar to the stars and constellations in the firmament through which to know and to perceive great wisdom applying it to the body 184 just as the appearance of the stars and constellations change in the firmament according to worldly Events so does the appearance of the marks and wrinkles on the skin of man change according to the actions of man from time to time this wisdom was given only for the true righteous to learn and to know this great knowledge 185 this is the book of the generations of Adam from time to time according to the actions of man marks are born changed and etched upon the skin of man for when the Holy Spirit rests within him it produces offspring and shows these marks of the outside spirit 186 and when the Holy Spirit removes itself from him and the spirit of defilement comes the spirit of defilement pulsates within him and appears on his exterior with familiar marks it is recognizable in the wrinkles of his exterior skin even if the hair the brow and the nose remain unchanged 187 Zayin Rush APE Samic Final Zadik this letter referring to the final Zadik is always exchangeable in this wisdom to clarify the main ones are the five letters Zayin Rush APE Samic these Letters form the word Zay Sefer this book the final Zadik joins with them always to be exchanged with these letters the letter Zayin is the letter that is found in the hair of man this is derived from Zayin namely weapons have Zayin and the weapons of Shimshon were in his hair for in his hair was all his bravery this was the crown of Elohim that was upon him 188 hair that stands in a familiar way and hangs from the top down stands in the letter sign of Zayin and is joined by the letter Zadik which enters and takes out the letter Samic 189 there is hair that hangs and is black and in the forehead there are three lines on the right side and two on the left side and these ones are not joined together with the others on the right side there are three thin marks that pass over them these are paths to cross over other lines on the left side there are five lines one of them is small in length this is included in the letter Zayin and the letter final Zadik then there are the strong eyebrows above the eye sockets that are joined together 190 such a man is angry though not quick to become angry he impedes his peace of mind he holds himself to be wise but he is not he constantly holds his head up high to watch he is quarrelsome in public but not at home he is not interested in Torah learning he considers people's words as a burden and answers them with emphatic words 191 if the eyebrows are separated one from the other touching yet not touching one another then you will find on the right side of the forehead two large lines and one small one and two small marks that have entered between them in with and on the left side are two lines one large one small and one small mark that has entered on one line but not the other 192 this is a man of anger he is angry one moment and the next moment he forgets his anger he is quarrelsome in his house and he is not at peace in spirit there was a time in his life when he was quite emphatic with People he looks down his forehead is creased at the time of his anger similar to a dog and when immediately it is forgotten his response is soft this is a man whose spirit and will is occupied with business he vows to pay taxes that is to pay all kinds of taxes to the king and in his endeavors to do business he becomes wealthy
Four on the left side and with two marks entering between them 194 when he speaks he stretches the skin of his forehead and these lines cannot be seen clearly he bends his head down and walks his right is like his left and his left like his right he is always depressed he mourns he has an evil tongue he regards himself as one who is wise in all his deeds he has a hatred for all who occupy themselves with thorough learning 195 another type is signified by a black mark on his left arm. With four small hairs in it two large ones that are hanging on it are red the hairs are smooth and hanging neither red nor black and his forehead is neither large nor small this stands between the letter same and the letter final zaydik is included in the letter a in 196 there is one large line in his forehead that spans in width from this side to that side there are two other lines not marked so emphatically since they are not continuous from one side to the other side as in it. Case of the first line there are four small creases that stand between the two eyebrows at the top of the nose 197 this is a happy man he is wise intelligent and lenient with his money he becomes wise in whatever he endeavors to know he can become angry in one moment and the next moment his anger is calm he does not hold a vindictive hatred forever at times he is well behaved and at other times he is not as well behaved but he is found in balance that is neither particularly good nor particularly bad when he repents to his master his master holds his hands and he is raised to great honor everyone needs him the letter same it goes with him always more than the letter final zadik all who counsel him with bad advice will not succeed for the bad advice will not be fulfilled and they cannot injure him he seems to be a charlatan but it is not so the letter same it and the letter final zadik wrestle over him therefore at times he is up and at times he is down when he repents before his master the letter same is victorious and fulfills his wish in everything he is compassionate and he cries when he is full of compassion 198 one mark is in the right arm and his face is without any hair at all but if there is hair which is curled not dangling below the ears but raised and curled above the ears then he keeps his word 199 his forehead is large but not huge there are five lines on it three pass from this side to that side of the forehead and two lines do not Traverse this man is a quarrelsome person at home for the most part all his actions are hurried and though they seem beneficial they are not he lauds himself for what he does not have this pertains to the letters a in itself remotely aspiring to the letters a by itself reaching yet not reaching the letters a is not included in him at all he is lenient in his speech but no more than that he brings more than he deserves to himself one who partakes with him must be wary of his greed but will succeed with him 200 another type is signified by hair that is dangling and is not flat he has a profusion of hair and five lines in it some are touching yet are not touching each other his eyes are shining and alert his head is bent low he seems to be pleasant and honest but is not so he praises himself if he occupies himself with thorough learning he acts like a great man he has strong desires when he speaks he wrinkles his nose and stretches the skin of his forehead all of his actions are for the sake of appearances in public he succeeds in wealth he is deceitful in all that he does he is a slanderer he knows how to defend himself from people in everything he has madness in him and conceals what he does so that it shall not be recognized he secretly brings strife between friends 201 he has big ears which are placed underneath his hair he is established by the letter final zadik and the letters a and therefore his actions are for the public if three hairs hang between his shoulders without any marks at all one who partakes with him will not succeed but he will succeed with his own deceit he appears to be righteous with respect to another and thinks that his are truthful actions in dealing with him 202 if his hair is crimped and hangs beneath his ears if he is unmerit and if there is one line in his brow and three creases at the top of his nose between his eyebrows then he is a happy man intelligent in all matters he is deceitful he concedes and gives into those closest to him that stands under the letter same and the letters a and as he grows older the letters are exchanged the letters a and is at the beginning followed by the letters a and he then no longer concedes except in his home he succeeds in wealth he is no longer deceitful having removed himself from that path 203 on his left eyebrow there is a small mark where a man had hit him in his youth his right eye is closed there are five furrows on top of his nose spanning it with between his eyebrows his hair is curled slightly on his head he creases his eyes this person stands in the letters a and alone he has no understanding he has madness in his heart he is hasty in his actions 204 he who has one line on his brow and four other small ones has no faith one should not associate with him since he will not be successful he sins against his master in all his actions he has one small birthmark on his left eye at times it disappears at other times it reappears if he has four lines on his brow he has all these mentioned above except for the birthmark on his left eye if he has three large lines and three small ones on his forehead and they are in the center of the forehead he has beautiful hair until this point is the secret of the hair 205 the forehead is to be made understandable through the hair and is to be defined through the eyes the eyes are to be explained through the hair from four perspectives in the pupil of the eye in the colors of the eye in the white of the eye in the black pupil of the eye all perceptions should be performed with the stated six signs the hair on the forehead and so on as mentioned previously these are to be applied to persons of at least 13 years in age when in a man the holy spirit has already separated itself from the spirit of uncleanliness the exception is the line since these lines whether small or large are constantly changing it is possible to distinguish if they are from it uncleanliness or from the holiness and so it is with all of them as will be discussed further 206 it is written and moses chose able men out of all israel shemot 1825 for he was seeking other signs apart from able men but did not find any also take wise men who are understanding and known among your tribes devarim 113 what is the meaning of known for they are known by those signs mentioned previously and he found them but they were not men of understanding this indicates that able men and wise men are near each other in quality since here the scriptures state and moses chose able men and in devarim the scriptures state so i took the chiefs of your tribes wise men and known of it 15 207 the eye is under the secret of the letter rush and the letter pe the eyebrows are white and the hair is red if the eyebrows are white this is a man of whom people must be wary everything he does is deceitful he is true he harbors hatred and all this is under the letter Rush alone when it is not joined with the letter P. This letter referring to P. walks and rambles over him and does not settle in him. His eyes are sunken. He is rushed in his actions, and so it is with all those whose eyes are recessed. We must be wary of all their actions. They are deceitful, and with their deceit they give logic to their words. Two hundred and eight. If his forehead is large and not round shaped, and two broad marks sweep across the brow from side to side, and also four small marks, and his hair hangs, then he is cool headed. Therefore, he is intelligent. His ears are small. He has hairy arms. He is covered with black spots. If he has red marks, he returns occasionally to do good, and so he remains for a brief time. And sometimes he returns to his evil ways. He is lustful. Two hundred and nine. It is the reverse with the seed of David. King David inherited this fine red to do judgment and to perform suitable deeds. His eyes were filled with compassion and were settled in fullness, projecting grace and kindness. And a green line ran through them at the time he waged war that line changed and became red as a rose when his anger was calmed from the war the line returned to its original great miracles were in his eyes people were happy and they longed to see them there were in them specks in three colors joy filled his whole heart the evil doers who observed them were greatly agitated and great fright and terror arose in their hearts 210 another type is he whose forehead is large and nicely rounded and all the letters are visible and rising in it some rise and some descend those that descend rise and each one gives space to the other because of this his impressions go upward in length on his forehead his eyebrows are filled with compassion they are not black nor are they red but in fact they are between these two colors the pupil of the eye from within projects all the worldly images a red line surrounds it and joy surrounds everything 211 at first when the evil doers approach to Look at the eyes these same evildoers laugh for there is compassion beauty and kindness in them afterwards they see in them power and fear terror and anger and his eyes are like doves when turned towards them what are doves eyes they are eyes that deceive the wicked as it is written in scriptures you shall not defraud have toned one another they cross 2514 and it is written you have doves have you sure hashering 41 that attract whoever observes them and repel them all the images of it world are included in his face the hairs on his head are blazed with the colors of seven kinds of gold 212 i saw the following written in the book of adam the appearance of the first messiah is as the moon which is malchute meaning of the seat of david since the second messiah is messiah son of joseph his face will be
Thousand Hanalek butlers Sir Hashirim 44 when he wages war that mark always becomes erect and protrudes and in the tower that Allah pulsates and he becomes powerful to wage a war when he enters into war the lion pulsates he becomes as strong as a lion and wins the wars in pulsating that tower accelerates and its sign is the righteous runs into it and is safe Michelet 1810 David is safe from his enemies they cannot overcome him and some of these signs and impressions were registered on his left arm no other individual ever had these marks as the seat of David 214 if the eyes are bright and protruding he has madness in his heart his forehead is large many hairs are hanging downward remote from the skin of the skull he is wise he boasts his lips are wilted he has the evil tongue 215 three lines are in his forehead if there are two red veins in his eyes then it is under the letter rush only an illuminating vein is present in them an opportunity arose for him to commit a Transgression and he was saved from a 216 if there is one red vein in his eye within standing lengthwise and two small veins beneath it and one vein traverses the eye he gives bad counsel pertaining to a woman prohibited to him and if the counsel still exists you will find one line lengthwise on his forehead from his right eyebrow protrudes one hair and four small hairs underneath and there is one hair that passes between them widthwise 217 if he withdrew from that transgression then you will find in his eyes two thin veins passing along the width of the eye but no other vein passes between them it is the same with the forehead the time of consideration for his withdrawal from this iniquity is nine days from then on these impressions are erased and other impressions appear 218 narrow eyes that become slightly red signify an understanding man all his words are in argument on his forehead you will find three impressions a large one passes from one side to the other side Two others do not pass this length his eyebrows are large he is stubborn when he speaks or when his heart is hard he wrinkles his nose in anger he has a bad reputation he is bad in the eyes of everyone and all hate him sometimes he succeeds and sometimes he does not 219 three large hairs are on his breast over his heart his lips are parched he is arrogant to the point of lunacy he has an evil tongue 220 his hair is flat long and profuse he has a slightly long and slightly rounded face at times he regrets all he did but returns to his bad deeds in his eyes you will find two veins in his right eye and one in his left eye his ears are small and straight 221 the seat of david is the reverse in the offspring of david all these signs are good signs and bring benefit except for big lips for all those who have big lips are slanderers whether righteous or evil unless he is a thoroughly righteous man that succeeds by his merits and guards himself from the evil tongue 222 if the eyes are green with a little red mixed in and on his forehead there are two impressions from this side to that side one small mark above and a small one on the bottom he is under the letters P E and rush this person's forehead is large and circular he is good to all he gives all of what he has to everybody he is yielding his hair is flat and hangs on the right side he has white hairs from the day he was born 223 mission men of the world of understanding of open eyes referring to people of Chakma people of faith the Sheshana which is treasured in you of whoever among you ascended and descended that is the recipients of the lights that illuminate from below upward called descent and lights that illuminate from above downward called descent he who has the spirit of holy Elohim in him shall rise and know that at the instant that the white head which is Keter so desired to create man it bestowed light into one luminary which is bind and this luminary bestowed light through the extension of the luminary which is Zeir and who balances and illuminates the two columns right and left of Bina and this extension of the luminary brought forth the souls of man 224. Even south the extension of the luminary which is Zeir and united with and poured into one solid rock which is Malchut and that rock brought forth a scorching flame textured with a variety of hues and that flame ascends and descends until the extension of that luminary which is Zeir and influences it, namely it poured into it the aspect of the central column and Chesedim and then it returns and settles in its place and becomes the Ruash life of Adam 225 this Ruash acquired boundaries of 12 diagonal limits that it received from Zeir and it takes on one hue from the sun from Zeir and which is green in color and it descends to a lower level and takes on one color from the moon Malchut which is a hue that receives from all the hues and receives from four living. Creatures the lion the ox the eagle and man in the lower chariot it moves to the right and takes on the hue of water which is white that is included in the mouth of a lion which is cheese it moves to the left and takes on the hue of fire which is red and is included in the mouth of an ox that is red like a rose which is pure moving to the front it takes on the hue of the wind green that eye is included in the mouth of a large eagle with great wings and feathers in which all hues are seen which is the hue of purple included in all the hues this is typhoret moving to the rear it takes on the hue of earth that receives from all the hues that is included in all four corners of the earth cheese and pure typhoret and malchute receiving from the mouth of man's face toward whom all images look this is malchute 226 this ruash settled in this earth and was clothed in it for the soil is malchute which is the nefesh of adam and the ruash was clothed in the nefesh then that soil which is the Nefesh swirl descended and gathered soil from the four directions and it was made into a form and a countenance which is the body of the first man the Ruash was concealed in the innermost and the Nefesh poured bounty into that soil that assembled from the four winds which is the body when it was included in the Ruash 227 this Nefesh is the origin of the actions of the body according to the actions of that Nefesh inside the body so shall it appear on the skin outside the Ruash is concealed on the inside and that referring to the Nefesh is visible from the outside it ascends and descends and strikes in his face showing shapes and impressions it strikes in his forehead showing shapes and marks it strikes in the eyes showing shapes and marks as it is written the sight of their face does witness against them Yeshayah 39 228 the luminary from which measurement is drawn is of one green thread which is the central column that has a green color it received the flame of Formlessness namely the fire of Malchut of the attribute of judgment it strikes on the hands of man when he is asleep and records impressions and lines in his hands according to the actions of man so is his hand etched these letters turn over in him from the bottom to top this wisdom is known by those friends who are righteous men of truth through the imprint of the letters of the luminary which is Malchut as previously mentioned all the inner resources of man manifest impressions lines and letters that interchange he who inscribes these also inscribes in the end of the tabernacle which is Malchut called tabernacle as it is written and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth Talim 13915 this refers to the lowest part of Malchut which is called earth she is also fashioned from the power of the flame of the attribute of judgment like the hands of man bless be and bless be his name forever and ever 229 white eyes and slivers of red flesh where the eyes protrude, namely in the eye socket so that when he rotates his eyes they are visible, are from the letter P and the letter Rush when they are included together 230 another type of person has a large forehead and three lines that come up in his forehead and six smaller ones red yet not very red and they stay between these two colors the same is true for his hair he has a large face his hair is wrinkled that is curly but not too much it hangs slightly below his ears that person is good. He has faith the moment he becomes angry it is an extremely intense anger 231 if that red below his eyes in the eye sockets as mentioned before spreads in his eyes he has a bad temper when he talks in anger he closes his mouth and his nostrils fume after a short time his anger subsides but not completely until after a day or two he is sometimes successful and sometimes not but he usually succeeds whether a little or much 232 if the red inside his eye is fine as a thread and does not Spread in the time of his anger if he has those signs he has a weak heart and is fearful of everything his sleep is unsettled he always has thoughts and is afraid of everything he causes everybody who joins him to succeed he is corrupt and does not refrain from adultery 233 sometimes he repents and is afraid and in his fright you will find redness inside his right eye at the rim of the eye and one fine red vein on his left eye and if they change that which was in the right is in the left and that which was in the left is in the right then he is sinful not having repented he returned and broke a piece of ice which interrupted him from the transgression in order to commit transgression 234 two few rows on top of his eye and three underneath on his left foot on the middle toe there are six hairs and sometimes five presently he has six hairs since one of them is short he has black eyes and his eyebrows have many hairs resting over each other these eyes are black eyes Interlaced with green, but the green is more recessed. That person has five lines on his forehead, two which traverse from side to side, and
Land of Egypt Shema 191 The Great Minister Uriel rules over the third month for Nisan Iyar and Sivan are compared with Chisid Bura and Tiferet as Michael rules in Chisid Gabriel and Bura and Uriel rules in Tiferet he is accompanied by 365 ten thousands of camps corresponding to the number of days of the year which are 365 days of the solar year and all of them have 365 keys of light issuing from the inner supernal Shashwal and Electrum which is treasured and concealed and in which the Mysteries of the Holy Supernal Letters of the Holy Name are suspended 236 This is the secret of the plain man Bershi 2527 who is Jacob the secret of Tiferet, meaning that he is the master of the house of man of Elohim plain is derived from wholeness for there is the ending of the knot of the Tephilim which is the secret of Malchut is called Leah and Jacob was a plain man meaning her man and the secret of the inner supreme Shashwal which is concealed and treasured has his shape and he holds all the hidden supreme lights and they issue forth from him and all the camps of the above mentioned angel Uriel hold the keys of that light that issues from the Shashwal 237 and that light includes the two lights of the right and the left and yet they are in it one light the first light is a white one too bright for an eye to behold and this is a treasured light for the righteous as it is written light is sown for the righteous Tehillim 97 11 and the second light is one which Gleams and sparkles red for it is the secret of the left light and both of them are included as one in it and they became one two hundred and thirty eight year old the arch minister and all those camps with him take that light which is called Gemini for it includes two lights therefore that constellation rules over this month which is called Gemini after its secret in which the Torah was given and from which all the grades are drawn below until they rise through the name to illuminate the world two hundred and thirty nine none of the other signs which rule in other months have a mouth or tongue but this one Gemini has a mouth and tongue included as one therefore it is written in regards to the Torah and you shall meditate therein day and night Yahashua eighteen day corresponds to the tongue which is Zeir and and night corresponds to the mouth which is Malchut and all is included in the secret of the Gemini and two hundred and forty it is written to me without the letter Aleph and in relation to the secret it is written. Tamim and behold there were twins had Tamim in her womb Bershi 2524 and Tamim is not said of Jacob and Esau for Esau is not connected to the secret it indicates that it is said Tamim of Jacob alone for Jacob is the secret of the central column which includes two lights the right and the left and after those two lights he is called Tamim when the scripture says behold Tamim it indicates that he Jacob was in her womb and the scripture praises Jacob for being in the womb of that righteous woman but because the wicked Esau was there too the letter Allah departed and it is written Tamim without Allah 241 all is one secret for Jacob receives through his secret type at the central column the two months Nisan and Iyar and he is included in the secret of the month seven which is the sign of Gemini this means that by being included in the month seven which includes two months Nisan and Iyar which are right and left it is therefore called twins and since Jacob is also included in it he receives those two months Esau receives through his own inner meaning the two months Tammuz and Abi but since he does not abide in the central column which is Elul he therefore loses Elul for Elul is not his and he does not even have the whole month of Abi but only nine days and no more so it can be seen that he is not included in the secret of the twins which is the central column he separated himself and turned towards the other side in not and desolation as it is written the enemies are come to an end in perpetual ruins Tehillim 97 242 because Jacob is in the sign of the twins the Torah was given to his children in the months of the twins being itself twins which is the written Torah and the oral Torah it was given in the third month to the triple nation which includes three grades namely the three fathers the Torah was given in three parts the Torah the prophets and the writings and all is one 243 in the third month we have already Explained that chapter in the scripture above Rabbi Shia said that at the time that Israel approached Mount Sinai the Holy One blessed be he gathered the seeds of the nation of Israel and examined them all and he found no blemish in all the seeds of Israel but saw they were all of a holy seed and of truth 244 at that time the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses now do I wish to give Israel the Torah draw them to me by my love for the patriarchs and by the signs that I have made. Manifest to them and you shall be my messenger therefore go and tell them those words Rabbi Yossi said that Rabbi Yehuda said that those were the words that the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses and continued thus you shall be my faithful messenger by drawing Israel to go after me section 15 thus shall you say to the house of Jacob here we read of the happiness of those who are chosen by God to come near to him those who reside in the Holy Land have it presence of God because the Shechina always dwells therein and Hashem called to him from the mountain saying thus shall you say to the house of Jacob Hashem means to reveal wisdom to the children of Israel and to tell them the truth about what he has done for them we read how Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia fall in with a man who has the wisdom of herbs and who cures them with one of his herbs of an ailment that they did not even know they had he shows them the danger and the power of his herb and they watch while it kills the serpent in this way we learn the tremendous power inherent in everything that God created to grow on earth 259 and Hashem called to him from the mountain saying thus shall you say to the house of Jacob Shemot 193 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion with the verse happy is he whom you choose and cause to approach to you that he may dwell in your court Tehillim 655 happy is the portion of the man whom the Holy One blessed be he desires to bring near to him to dwell in the holy palace for he whom he desires to receive to worship him is inscribed above to make it known that he has been chosen by the holy king to dwell in his apartment and everyone who has upon him such a sign can pass through all the supernal gates without any hindrance 260 rabbi Yehuda said happy is the share of moses of whom it is written happy is he whom you choose and cause to approach to you and of whom it is also written and moses drew near to the mist shema 2018 and, and moses alone shall come near hashem but they shall not come near shema 242 thus shall you say to the house of jacob are the opem and the children of israel are the men 261 rabbi shimon said thus had koh shall you say has the same meaning as in the verse in this way had koh shall you bless me bar 622 and as in another verse in your pious ones shall bless you have your 14510 namely bless have your koh koh being malchut which is called koh thus shall you say to the house of jacob meaning by saying from the side of judgment and tell the children of israel is the same as in the verse and he declared told to you his covenant devarim 413 and as in the verse i profess tell the stage hashem your elohim devarim 263 foretelling pertains to mercy the children of israel are the men who come from the side of mercy therefore it is addressed to them by telling 262 rabbi Yitzhak said since we have come upon this verse why is it written i told the stage hashem your elohim instead of hashem our elohim rabbi shimon replied not only this for it is also written for hashem your elohim brings you into a good land devarim 87 that hashem your elohim gives you devarim 716 and it is written for hashem your elohim is a consuming fire devarim 424 and all of them are written the same way 263 we have learned that he who resides in the land of israel has elohim and he who resides outside of it is as he who is without Elohim the reason for this is that the holy seed comes to the holy land and the Shechinah dwells in her place and they depend on each other therefore Moses did not say your Elohim except to those who were going to settle in the holy land and to receive the Shechinah and Moses did not say our Elohim since he did not merit to enter into the holy land therefore it is written your Elohim in all these verses for they were to enter there 264 he said to him assuredly it is so but why is it written and you shall come to the priest that shall be in those days and say to him I profess this day to Hashem your Elohim Devarim 263 if they were already in the holy land why did he say your Elohim and not our Elohim and he answers that they show and praise the supernal Jesus for it granted them all that merit to enter and dwell in that holy land and performed by them all that goodness therefore they said those words to the priest as it is written I profess this day to the Hashem your Elohim for he comes from the side of the Chisa 265 thus shall you say to the house of Jacob namely to that place which is appropriate to their grade and tell the children of Israel namely to that place which is appropriate to their grade for Jacob and Israel are two grades Jacob is the level of the six ends and Israel is the grade of the first three Sfirot and both of them amount to one
And I asked him tell us what are these bundles of herbs for he gave no reply and did not even raise his head I asked him again but he gave no answer then I said to Rabashi my son this man is either deaf or mad or wise so we sat down near him afterwards he collected all the herbs and made them into bundles and covered each bundle with fig leaves 267 he turned to us and said I see that you are Jews and Jews are said to be clever people if I did not have pity for you now you would be expelled from people as lepers are for I perceive the odor of a certain herb which has entered your body you would be outcast from men for three days but now eat this wild garlic and you will be healed 268 so we ate from these that were before us and fell into a sleep and we were bathed in perspiration for a long time when we awakened that man said now your Elohim is with you for you have found me and the cure of your bodies is accomplished through me 269 as we went along he said to us every person must converse with his fellow according to their way that is to a woman according to her way and to a man according to his way and to a man among men according to his way then I was struck by this remark and said to Rabbi Shia, my son this accords with the verse thus shall you say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel 270 the man said to us you probably noticed that I did not raise my head nor did I speak to you this is because my father was a greater expert in herbs than anyone else at his time and I have learned from him the powers and the uses of all the herbs that are true and I spend a whole year among them 271 now I will tell you of this herb you saw me covered with fig leaves in a northern corner in my house there is a place in which there is a millstone from the hole of which a man with two heads emerges he carries a sharp sword in his hands and every day he distresses us I gathered this herb on account of him now follow me and you shall see the power of the herb and what the supreme Elohim has revealed in the world and that there is no one that knows his ways 272 so we followed him on the way to his house we saw him bending to a hole in the ground in which he deposited some of that herb and a serpent with an enormous head issued the man took a rope and bound the serpent as though it was a lamb we were afraid but the man told us to follow him 273 when we reached his house we saw that place in the dark Behind a wall he took a candle and kindled the fire around that place of the millstone and he said to us do not be frightened at what you see and keep silent 274 while at that he loosened the serpent's bonds and ground some of the herbs and sprinkled this upon the serpent's head and the serpent descended into the opening of that millstone and we heard a voice which caused the whole place to shake we wanted to leave but the man took hold of our hands saying fear not come close to me. 275 meanwhile the serpent reappeared and it was dripping blood again the man took some of that herb and sprinkled it upon the serpent's head the serpent entered the opening of that millstone after a short time we saw a man with two heads came out from the millstone with a serpent wound about his neck he come in and out of that millstone three times saying chameleon chameleon woe to his mother who brought him to that place 276 then the millstone was torn from its place and both the man and the serpent came out fell down and died we were terrified then that man said thus is the power of the herb which I collected in your presence this was the reason why I did not speak to you or raise my head when you approached me 277 he said to us if men only knew the wisdom of all that the holy one blessed be he has planted in the earth and all the power of all that which is to be found in the world they would acknowledge the power of their master in his great wisdom but the holy one blessed be he has purposely hidden this wisdom from men in order that they do not turn from his ways by trusting in that wisdom alone thus forgetting him 278 when I came and recounted those things to Rabbi Shimon he said surely that was a wise man for observe that there is no grass or herb that grows on the earth in which much wisdom and great power in heaven is not manifested come and observe this from the hyssop for whenever the holy one blessed be he desires that men purify themselves they have to do it by the hiss of what is the reason to arouse that power above that is appointed over for when it is aroused it exterminates the spirit of impurity and the defiled person is cleansed and to you I say blessed be the merciful one who delivered you section 16 on eagle's wings you have seen what I did to Egypt and how I bore you on eagle's wings the section tells us by way of analogy with the eagle that God is merciful to his own children but uses severe judgment with the heathen nations in the vision of Ezekiel the face of man includes the face of a lion and the face of an ox with the face of the eagle mercy between them and combining them 279 you have seen what I did to Egypt and how I bore you on eagle's wings Shemot 194 what does eagle's wings mean Rabbi Yehuda said that eagle's wings means mercy as it is written in the verse as an eagle stirs up her nest Devarim 3211 meaning that an eagle signifies mercy and this is the secret in Rabbi Shimon's words, the way of the vultures in the air, Mishlei 3019 in the air means with mercy for Zeir and is called heaven and has mercy for Chesed, Vira and Tiferet are judgment and mercy as the eagle watches mercifully over its own young but is cruel toward others so is the Holy One blessed be he merciful towards Israel but judges the heathen nation severely 280 Rabbi Lazar was once going from Cappadocia to Lot accompanied by Rabbi Uzi and Rabbi Shiva. Had risen at sunrise and as the light appeared they started to walk Rabbi Shia said I see the vision which is described in the verse and they four had the face of a lion on the right side and they four had the face of an ox on the left side they four also had the face of an eagle Yeshiskel 110 and I wonder if the lion is on the right side and the ox is on the left one where is the place of the eagle 281 Rabbi Lazar replied its place is where Jacob is meaning the central column it Reason for this is that the eagle combines everything both mercy and judgment, mercy to its own young and judgment to the others so the holy one blessed be he the secret of the central column led Israel with love and dealt sternly with others as it is written and bore you on eagle's wings and as an eagle stirs up her nest 282 we can learn that an eagle signifies mercy for it is written the way of the vultures led eagle in the air led heaven actually in heaven which is C.E.I.R. And the proprietor of mercy therefore the lion is on the right and the ox on the left and the eagle is between them and combines both of them the face of a man includes all of them and in it they are all comprised for he is the aspect of malchud which receives from all of them as it is written upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it Ibid 26 section 17 and it came to pass on the third day the theme of mercy and Judgment is continued in the section good deeds are necessary to deserve mercy and this idea is explored through looking at the verse we have a little sister and she has no breasts what shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for the third day of the title verse refers to Tiferet that is mercy 283 and it came to pass on the third day Shemot 1916 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the verse we have a little sister and she has no breasts what shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for sure Hashirim 88 a little sister is the congregation of Israel which is called the sister of the Holy One blessed be he she has no breasts is as we have learned that when Israel approached Mount Sinai they had in them no merits or good deeds to protect them as it is written she has no breasts for they are the beauty of a woman and a woman's beauty comes from them alone what shall we do for our sister that is what will be done with them when the Holy One blessed be he reveals himself on Mount Sinai to proclaim the words of the Torah for their souls will fly away from them. 284 Rabbi Yossi said at the time Israel approached Mount Sinai together with that night and the following morning it was three days altogether during which the people abstained from conjugal intercourse with their wives the holy angels came and received them with fraternity for they are angels above and Israel are angels below they sanctify the supreme name above while Israel sanctify the supreme name below 285 and Israel were crowned with 70 crowns on that night then the supernal angel said we have a little sister and she has no breasts for they have no merits and good deeds so what shall we do for our sister that is how shall we honor her on the day when the Holy One blessed be he reveals himself on Mount Sinai to give them the Torah 286 it is written be ready by the third day come not near a woman. Shemot 19:15 and, and it came to pass on the third day Rabbi Shimon said that at the time that the Holy One blessed be he desired to be revealed on Mount Sinai he gathered all his retinue and told them now Israel are like children who do not know my commandments and I desire to be revealed before them with mercy and they will accept my law therefore it is written and it came to pass on the third day indeed the manifestation took place on the third day for it is the day of Tiferet which is mercy and how do we know all that it is written he bowed the heavens also and came down to Shmuel 2210 and heavens are Tiferet which is mercy as is
Morning stars sang together and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. Yo 377 As soon as the stars fade away and the sun shines at that time as it is written a morning without clouds and Shisa is awakened in the lower world at that time it is written when morning came since the stars disappeared and morning appeared. 289 Rabbi Yossi said that when morning came the Holy One blessed be he started to reveal himself on Mount Sinai. We learned that when morning came means when the merit of Abraham is awakened of whom it is written and Abraham went early in the morning. Bereshit 1926 section 18 There were thunders and lightnings. The rabbis offer various ideas about voices. One of them says that it means two voices, water and wind, which became one. One of them says that it is one voice that never ceases. One of them says that it comes from three, wind, water and fire. The discussion moves to lightning and then to the fiery law that is. The Torah and we learned that the sound of the shofar came forth to break the heavy dark cloud 290 there were thunders had kolot and lightning shemot 1916 rabbi abba said that kolot is spelled without vav indication of the plural form signifying that there were two thunders lit voices that became one again one emanating from the other wind from water and water from wine two that are one and one that is two therefore the word kolot is written without vav 291 rabbi yossi said kolot means one this voice is a great and strong one which never ceases as it is written a great voice which was not heard again to Aram 519 this is because all the other voices do cease as we learn four times a year the voice ceases and then judgments are awakened in the world but this voice which includes the other voices never ceases and never abates of its full existence and force we have learned that this voice is the voice of voices the voice which contains all other voices 292 Rabbi Yehuda said there is no voice but the one which comes from wind, water and fire that are the three columns and all this the voice performs which is the central column and by it the columns are included in each other and become one therefore the word kolot is spelled without Bob indication of the plural form and lightning Rabbi Yehuda cited that verse and explained he makes lightning for the rain Tehillim 1357 meaning that lightning is the combination of fire and water is lightning in the rain for the flame of the lightning in the rain indicates that it is a union of mercy with infrequent love 293 Rabbi Yehuda said we have learned that the Torah was given from the side of viewer Rabbi Yehuda said in that case the Torah must be of the left side he said it returned to the right as it is written from his right hand went to fiery law for them Devarim 332 and your right hand Hashem is glorious in power Shema 156 so we see that the left is included within the right for it is written from his right hand a fiery law for them and the right is included within the left for it is written your right hand Hashem is glorious in power thus Bureau which is the left is included within the right 294 and a heavy cloud upon the mountain Shemot 1916 meaning a very mighty cloud stuck in one place because of its heaviness that does not move from place to place as do other clouds and the sound of a shofar exceedingly loud but that sound was very strong for it issued from the midst of the heavy cloud in order to break it as it is written when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness devarim 520 295 rabbi yehuda said there were three kinds of darkness for it is written darkness clouds and thick darkness devarim 411 and that voice namely the voice of the shofar came forth as the innermost depths rabbi yossi said that the innermost of all of them was the voice of which it is written a great voice which was not heard again Section 19 And all the people saw the voices here the experience where Moses talked face to face with God on Mount Sinai is compared to Ezekiel's visions it is pointed out that Ezekiel saw the Shechina and the hand of God but Moses was greater because he saw the head and body of Zerant and all the people who were on the mountain literally saw the voice as it was carved out of darkness cloud and fog and figuratively they saw what no one in succeeding generations would ever again see until the time of Messiah and that was the supernal illumination that showed them all hidden and veiled knowledge 296 Rabbi Abba said it is written and all the people perceived the thunderings lit saw the voices Shema 2015 he asks why is it written see rather than hear and he answers that we have already learned that those voices were carved out upon the darkness cloud and the fog visible as a body is and they saw whatever it was they saw and heard what they heard from within the darkness cloud and fog and because they saw that sight they were illuminated with a supernal illumination and new things beyond the understanding of all other generations to come 297 all of them saw face to face as it is written Hashem talked with you face to face to Aram 54 and what did they see Rabbi Yossi explains from the illumination of those voices as there was not a voice that did not shine they could see all things hidden and veiled which will never be revealed to succeeding generations until the days of King Messiah therefore it is written and all the people see the voices for they actually saw 298 Rabbi Lazar said and all the people see means as we have said that they saw all those wonderful things that no generation after will ever see by means of the illumination of those voices the voices has the same meaning as in the verse I saw Hashem Yeshayah 61 it is written Hashem preceded by the particle ET which means that he saw the Shechina which is called ET in this verse 2 it is written and all the people see the voices with the particle ET lit to indicate that they saw the Shechina 299 in the same manner we can explain the verse the heaven and the earth Bereshit 11 for all the ET lit the particles mentioned in the Torah enable us to have the perception of wisdom as in the verse honor ET your father and ET your mother Shema 2012 and the verse honor ET Hashem with your substance Mishle 38 these verses are explained as including something in addition here to the voices include that other voice below which is Malchut which gathers into itself the other voices and that which emerges from the minute in Malchut the people saw and beheld through sublime wisdom all the celestial treasures and all the hidden mysteries which were never revealed to succeeding generations or to any faraway generations and will not be revealed until the days of King Messiah as it is written for they Shall see I to I Hashem returning to Zion Yeshayah 528 he asks why is the lightning called first lightning had Birikim Shemot 1916 and afterwards lightning had Lapidim and he answers that both of them have one meaning for when the Birikim are quite formed and ready to appear they are called Lapidim 300 the sound in the shofar Shema 2015 Rabbi Yitzhak says it is written Elohim has spoken once twice have I heard this Tehillim 6212 this is similar to I am Hashem your Elohim and you shall not make for yourself Shema 202 I am signifies the secret of Bina and you shall not make for yourself signifies the secret of Zeir and Pen and both of them were uttered at once in this verse 2 the sound is Zeir and Pen and the shofar is Bina and both were uttered at the same time 301 Rabbi Yehuda said it should have said the sound in the shofar why does it say of the shofar and he answers that voice was called shofar as in the verse then shall you cause it. Shofar to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month on the day of atonement by Akra 259 on that Yom Kippur day of atonement it is called Shofar meaning that when the sound issues from Bina the sound is called Shofar 302 Rabbi Yossi said as the physical Shofar makes a sound which includes fire air and water here too everything is included in it for here in the sound that comes out from the Shofar fire wind and water are included which are Chisit Bura and Typhur at the secret of it. Three columns and from this sound other sounds emerge 303 Rabbi Laser said that the sound of the Shofar means the sound which comes out from a Shofar which means that there is one Shofar and a solitary sound comes out from it for the sound is the secret of Zeir and Pen and the Shofar is the secret of Bina the Shofar stands by itself separate from the sound which comes out of IT therefore it is written the sound of the Shofar and not the sound in the Shofar 304 Rabbi Yehuda said. In the sound of the shofar, the word shofar is spelled without the letter Bob, for it has the same meaning as in the verse. It pleased have shofar to Yosh Daniel 61, and in the verse, O King, let my counsel be acceptable. Have Yishvar to you, Daniel 424, and the verse, I thought it could have shofar to report the signs and wonders, Daniel 332, meaning that these are expressions which speak of glory and beauty, which alludes to Zeir and the secret of Typhara 305. Rabbi Shimon said that the sound of the shofar means that the place from which the sound comes out is called shofar, for the sound is Zeir and and the shofar is Bina and Zeir and issues from Bina as is known. Rabbi Shimon continued and said, Come and behold, the sound of the shofar refers to where the voice is, for it is written by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Hashem does man live. The 73, what
Still, what does still mean? Rabbi Shimon said that one must be silent with awe and shut his mouth as it is written. I said, I will take heed of my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep a curb on my mouth. Tehillim 392. The word still means silence in which no voice is heard outside. When the people saw it, they were shaken and stood afar off for what they saw frightened them. The word shaken also moved. Shema 2015 has the same meaning as in and the post of the door moved at the voice of him. Yeshaya 64 307. We have learned that Ezekiel saw the might of the ways of the Holy One. Blessed be he as it is written. And I looked and behold, a storm wind came out. Yeshaya 14. What is the storm wind for Rabbi Yossi explained to break the four kingdoms? Rabbi Yehuda said, We have learned that it is a great wind that was aroused through the mighty deeds above and it came out from the north. It is not written from north but the north with the definite article which Indicates that specific wind which is hidden and kept above 308 a great cloud and a fire flaring up. If it flaring up means that it held yet held not to it gripping its sides to arouse judgment. We learned that three times a day severe judgment sucks from the supernal inscriptions that come from the side of Gura. Therefore it says and a fire flaring up so that it would be roused in the world 309. What mitigates this flaring up fire of Bina brightness was about it before. That splendor which is chalkness surrounds it and encircles it and mitigates it so that the judgment is not too hard for men to bear 310 and out of the midst of it as it were the color of electrum means from its interior part what is electrum had Joshua Rabbi Yehuda said it is the speaking of fiery animals had Jayadesh, Memelilin, which are from the aspect of the male and female when face to face which are then called voice and speech hence they talk 311 Rabbi Yossi said we. Have learned that Joshua means the heart had left length bed of the fire, meaning the secret of the lamb bed equals 32 paths of chakma, which are the living creatures of Bino, which is the secret of the fire flaring up as it is written out of the midst of it as it were the color of electrum. It is written this way instead of just the electrum, for as it were like that alludes to the light of the chakma, which is called an eye out of the midst of the fire, means from the inner part of the fire as it were the color of electrum, means that electrum is behind the four grades, for it is written a storm wind, a great cloud, a fire flaring up, and the brightness was about it out of the midst of the fire refers to that fire flaring up, which is Bino, and it does not mean out of the midst of the brightness. 312 Rabbi Yusi, the son of Rabbi Yehuda, said that Israel at Mount Sinai saw what the prophet Ezekiel never saw, and they were all united with the divine precious. Wisdom Israel saw five grades of voices on Mount Sinai by which the Torah was given. The fifth grade was the sound of the shofar. Ezekiel saw but five lower grades outside those five voices, which were a storm wind, a great cloud, a fire flaring up, a brightness was about it, and as it were the color of electrum. 313 Rabbi Lazar said of Israel, It is written, Hashem talked with you face to face. Devarim 54 and of Ezekiel, it is written, as it were, and likeness, like one who looks from behind many walls, like a man looking from behind a wall. Rabbi Yehuda said that what Israel saw on Mount Sinai, no prophet ever saw, and much more so what Moses saw, no other prophet saw. Happy is his share of whom it is written, and he was there with Hashem. Shema 3428, for this is the secret of the shining mirror instead of a different mirror which does not shine as it is written manifestly and not in dark speeches. Bimid bar 128, not like the other mirrors which do not illuminate and speak. In riddles 314, Rabbi Yossi said, Come and behold, when the scripture said, The word of Hashem came, Hehoheah Yeshiskel 13, it indicated that the prophecy was for that time alone, therefore it is written there, Hehoheah Rabbi Yehuda said that this was for support for Israel to know that the Holy One, blessed be he, had not forsaken them and to prove to them that wherever they are spread in exile, he is with them. 315, Rabbi Lazar remarked that the expression Hehoheah Lit was being means that he both saw and did not see, understood and did not understand, as it is written, I saw something like the color of Electrum Yeshiskel 127, ITI is not written, I saw Electrum, but of Israel it is written, and all the people see the voices, meaning that each one of them saw according to what he was worthy of seeing. 316, we have learned that they stood in rows and in groups and divisions, and each one saw as befitted him. Rabbi Shimon said that the chiefs of the tribe stood by themselves and all the women by themselves and five grades stood at the right and five grades at the left as it is written you stand to stay all of you before Hashem your Elohim your captains of your tribes your elders and your officers with all the men of Israel the Arm 299 these are the five grades to the right and what are the five grades to the left it is written your little ones your wives and your stranger that is in your camp from the hero of your wood to the drawer of your water Ibn 10 these are the five grades to the left 317 all these grades were established in the likeness of above against them Israel inherited an eternal possession the ten commandments from which are suspended all the precepts and merits and all the inheritance of their portion being the good portion of Israel 318 we have learned that at the time that the Holy One blessed be he revealed himself on Mount Sinai all of Israel looked as one who sees a light streaming through the glass of an oil lamp by means of that light each one of them saw more than the prophet Ezekiel 319 how is this so because all the supernal voices were revealed at once as it is written and all the people see the voices but to Ezekiel the Shechina alone was revealed through her chariots and he caught but glimpses of it as though through many walls 320 Rabbi Yehuda said happy is the portion of Moses of him it is written and Hashem came down upon Mount Sinai and Hashem called Moses Shema 1920 and happy are the generation of whom it is written Hashem will came down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai 321 come and behold whatever was revealed came from the right side as it is written from his right hand went a fiery law for them to Barim 332 and he asks what is the difference between this and the one which Ezekiel saw Rabbi Yossi answered that here on Mount Sinai the head and the body of the king were revealed as it is written he bowed the heavens also and Came down to Shmuel 2210 for before this it is written there went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth Ibn 9 meaning that there was only a head of which nostrils and mouth are mentioned and wherever there is a head there is also a body but of Ezekiel it is written and the hand of Hashem was there upon him Yeshiskel 13 only the hand was revealed not the body and we have learned that even the hand has two aspects the supernal hand which is the hand of Zeir and Ben and the lower hand which is Malchut and is called the hand and to Ezekiel the lower hand was revealed 322 come and behold in the verse the heavens were opened and I saw visions of Elohim Yeshiskel 11 the word visions had Maroti is written without the letter Bob an indication of one mirror which is the Shechina Rabbi Yes ask is not the Shechina all inclusive Rabbi Yes answered the head of the king is not to be likened with his feet which is the Shechina that clothes him from the chest Downwards called his feet, although everything is part of the body of the king 323 come and behold it is said of Isaiah and I saw Hashem Yeshayah 61 which is the Shechina called E.T. Lippe and of Ezekiel it is written and I saw visions of Elohim here E.T.I.S. the Shechina and their visions I.S. the Shechina for what one saw so did the other namely only the Shechina happy is the portion of Moses there was no prophet as perfect as he for he saw the illuminating mirror which is Z.E.I.R. and 324 and I saw E.T. Hashem E.T. precisely refers to the Shechina and I saw visions of Elohim vision being precisely the Shechina Isaiah and Ezekiel were both in the same grade and he asks why then did Isaiah not give a detailed description as Ezekiel did Rabbi Yossi answers the one spoke in general namely Isaiah and the other in details namely Ezekiel why did Ezekiel give such a detailed description he answers Ezekiel spoke in a detailed manner in consideration of Israel so that they would know that the Holy One blessed be he loved them and that the Shechina with her chariots had gone down into exile to dwell with them. 325 Rabbi she asked why did the Shechina reveal herself in the land of Kastim for it is written behold the land of Kastim this people was not Yeshua 2313 if it was for Israel's sake surely she could have been present among them without being revealed and he answers we have learned that if she had not revealed herself they would not have known that she was with them. 326 she revealed herself as written by the river Kavar Yeshua 11 meaning by the water in a place where impurity cannot dwell that river was one of the four rivers
He saw them in the world of Yitzhara 328 and you may think that he beheld them further above the world of Yitzhara yet we learned that Moses saw the vision from a bright mirror which is Z-E-I-R-N and while other prophets derived their visions from a dull mirror as written and I saw visions had Maroti of Elohim the word Maroti is written without the letter Bob which indicates Malchut and if there be a prophet among you I shall make myself known to him in a vision my servant Moses is not. So with him I speak mouth to mouth Bimid bar 126 to 7 329 Rabbi Yossi said come and behold all the prophets are in comparison with Moses like a female to a male as written with him I speak mouth to mouth manifestly have you Mara lit and a mirror which is most certainly the bright mirror had Mara as it is written with him I speak mouth to mouth of all other prophets it is said if there be a prophet among you I shall make myself known to him in a vision had Bimara meaning that they derive their vision from a dull mirror and it is written Bimara lit a vision and not Maroti without the letter Bob all the more so of Ezekiel as it is not written in relation to him Mara but rather Maroti without the letter Bob for he saw the vision from the world of Yetzirah this is all the more so for Moses of whom it is written and not in dark speeches but showed him everything clearly blessed indeed was the generation among whom this prophet lived 330 Rabbi Yossi said in the name of Rabbi Yehuda that Israel saw the precious glory of their king face to face and there were neither blind nor lame nor deaf nor any without hands among them no blind as it is written and all the people perceived no lame as it is written and they stood at the foot of the mountain Shema 1917 there were no lame and none without hands as written and they said all that Hashem has said will we do and obey Shema 247 and of the days to come it says then shall the lame man leap as a heart and the tongue of the dumb saying Yeshua 356 section 20 and Elohim spoke we are told here of God's admonitions to his chosen people so that they will merit the world to come and be worthy of the heaven above Zerenban and the earth above Malchut Rabbi Shimon explains that the heritage of Jacob bestowed through Isaac's blessing means that Jacob and all his descendants will be revived by the dew of heaven that is raised from the dead in the time to come. When Elohim spoke each word rose and descended was watered with the heavenly dew and circled Israel and brought back their souls and it was engraved upon the tablets of stone and each word was like a treasure house full of precious secrets and laws he who occupies himself with the study of the Torah of its secrets and laws is saved from the fire of Gehenna and this is due to the merit of Abraham who pled for the children of Israel lastly we are told that the smoke that came out of Sinai was the Shechinah who manifested herself there to the people 331 and Elohim spoke all these words saying Shema 201 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with that verse and said who can utter the mighty acts of Hashem who can declare all his praise Tehillim 1062 in how many ways does the Torah admonish man not to sin before his master in how many ways does it counsel him not to turn from the way either to the right or to the left and in how many forms it shows him how to return to his master so that he may forgive him 332 we have learned that the Torah has given a man 613 counsels in order that he may be perfect with his master for his master desires only his good both in this world and in the world to come but especially in the world to come since whatever good the Holy One blessed be he bestows upon man in this world is taken from the sum of good which he is entitled to receive in the world to come why is that because the world to come is the possession of the Holy One blessed B 333 we have learned that the comparison between this world and the world to come is as an antechamber compared with the hall itself the reward of the righteous is his very own as it is written of the tribe of Levi therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren why because Hashem is their inheritance Devarim 182 happy is a man who is entitled to receive such a supernal heritage for he merits it in this world and in the house of this world as well as in the world to come in the heavenly holy house as it is written and to them will I give in my house and within my walls a memorial Yeshua 565 happy is the portion of the righteous for being worthy to dwell with the king in his own house 334 Rabbi Shimon said happy is the portion of the righteous who is worthy of this as it is written and shall you delight yourself in live above Hashem Yeshua 5814 it is not written in Hashem but above Hashem namely in the place from which the upper end the lower worlds are derived and for which they yearn of which it is written from where Hebayin comes my help Tehillim 1211 referring to the sphere of Keter which is called nothing as Hebayin and it is also written and came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him Daniel 713 namely Keter which is called the Ancient of Days the desire and the delight of the righteous is to look at that splendor once all lights issue and all celestial crowns which are the Sfirat are drawn 335 Rabbi Shimon continued we learned of the verse then shall you delight yourself in Hashem that it ends with and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth Yeshua 5814 this refers to the place called the high places of the earth which is above the earth which is Malchut and is called earth and heaven namely Zeir and is written the high places of the earth for heaven is above the earth 336 Rabbi Abba continued with more explanations it is not written shall you sit but rather shall you delight yourself in live above Hashem namely heaven which is Zeir Anpin for it is written be you exalted O Elohim above the heavens Tehillim 5712 that is Zeir Anpin and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth refers to the land of the living which is Malchut called earth the meaning of upon the high places is that it includes Zion and Jerusalem for they are the inside and the outside of Yezid of Malchut meaning that the verse speaks of the heaven above which is Zeir Anpin and the earth above which is Malchut and that which Rabbi Shimon spoke is thus as I said and it is all one as written and came to the ancient of days and all amounts to the same 337 Rabbi Abba asked Rabbi Shimon may my master explain the verse and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father Rabbi Shimon answered him it was already explained that the delight end. Pleasure are as written above Hashem which is above namely Keter and it is written and came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him upon the high places of the earth is as we said the land of the living namely Malchut 338 and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father has the same meaning as the verse therefore the Elohim give you of the dew of heaven Bereshit 2728 the dew of heaven means the heritage of Jacob and when Isaac blessed Jacob he alluded to heaven which is Zeir and Ben and he gave him the blessing that all the descendants of Jacob in the future will be revived by that dew as it is written therefore the Elohim give you only you and not to someone else the dew of heaven is that by which the dead will be revived in the days to come for that dew issues from Atika Kaddish the Holy Ancient One to Zerenpin which is called heaven and resides in heaven Rabbi Abba thought of the verse and said now everything is clear and I see that. There is even more significance in Isaac's blessing than I had thought. 339 Who can utter Hebimel the mighty acts of Hashem? Tehillim 1062 He asks why does it say utter instead of tell Rabbi Shia explained the answer by citing the verse then you may pluck the ears Hebmelelot with your hand. Devarim 2326 They are so called for one has to separate the grains from the ear by plucking Hebmelelot with the hands and when it says utter it means that one should separate and cancel it. Judgments of Hashem the word Burat lit mighty acts of Hashem is spelled without the letter Bob the indication of the plural form and implies that there are many Burat but all of them are coming from one Burat we have learned that there is one supernal Burat the crown of the crowns which is mine from which judgments are aroused and from which come fifty gates some to the right and some to the left and each one of them is called Burat and each one of them is crowned with the lights of the supernal carvings and all of them are called the mighty acts of Hashem 340 Rabbi Shia said therefore the word Burat is written without the letter Bob for all the Burat are included within the supernal Burat which is by the closing part of the verse is who can declare all his praise this indicates the Shechinah which is the most precious glory of the Holy One blessed be he as it is expressed in the verse his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Chabakah 33 341 Rabbi Shimon cited a verse and a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and branched into four streams the name of the first is Pishon Bereshit 210 those rivers which came from that river which comes forth from Eden have names but what is the name of the one which comes out of Eden Rabbi Shimon says that its name is Yubal for it is written and that spreads out its roots by the river
Heavenly dew then it encircled Israel and brought back their souls and it turned back and was engraved upon the tablets of stone and so it was with each and every word 344 Rabbi Shimon said that every word contained all manner of legal implications and derivations all the laws concerning reward and punishment as well as all mysteries and hidden aspects for each word was like a treasure house full of precious things 345 when one word was uttered it seemed as one but when it was engraved in its place upon the tablets of stone 70 branches were revealed in it 50 crowns less one on one side and 50 less one upon the other like the hammer which breaks the rocks in a mountain as it is written like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces Yermea 2329 and all of Israel saw Ajuai and rejoiced 346 the souls of all the generations to come were present there and all of them received the Torah on Mount Sinai as it is written but with those that stands here with us this day and also with those that are not here with us this day of Aram 2914 they were all there each according to his merit and saw and received the words 347 and Elohim spoke all these heavy words saying Shema 201 the name Elohim indicates Bura ET indicates that it was joined to the right as we have learned the ET heaven is the right end and the earth is the left as written my hand also has laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand has spanned it. Heavens Yeshea 4813 the right side is Jesus and is called ET the word all is in order to include all the others Firat these words indicate that everything is included one within the other these indicates all the meanings the secrets the mysteries decrees and penalties 348 the word saying indicates that all that was said was an inheritance for everyone as it is written Moses commanded us a Torah the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob Devarim 334 you may say that IT should be understood literally to reveal to everyone and to reveal what must not be revealed to anyone however it says I am Hashem your Elohim Shema 201 which indicates that as I am hidden and concealed so should these words be covered and concealed in your heart 349 there is another interpretation of this verse and Elohim spoke is one grade all ET these words saying are five more grades for each word is a grade Rabbi Yehuda said that and Elohim spoke is Bura ET is the right side which is Jesus and all includes both Bura and Jesus Rabbi Yitzhak said that all includes Abraham for it is written and Hashem had blessed Abraham in all things Bereshit 241 350 the function of words is to include all the covered crowns the word these includes all those which were revealed as it is written and all the people see the voices namely the revealed visions included in these saying refers to the Shechina as it is written a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband Mishlei 124 and it was said if a man put away his wife here Mea 31 the word saying I ask close to her man which indicates that it refers to the Mukba of Zeir Anpin which is the Sheshana 351 Rabbi Yitzhak asked why was the Torah given in fire and darkness as it is written and the mountain burned with fire to the heart of heaven with darkness clouds and thick darkness Devarim 411 and he answered that the reason I ask that he who is occupied with the study of the Torah will be saved from the other fire of Gehenom and from the darkness that the other nations bring upon Israel it was the merit of Abraham which saved Israel from the fire of Gehenom 352 as we have learned the Holy One blessed be he said to Abraham as long as your children shall study the Torah they will be saved from fire and darkness but if they should turn from her and forget her paths the fire of Gehenom will have dominion over them and they will be subjected to the nations and Abraham said to him may things not come to pass the fire of Gehenom and exile with these two knots if it pleases you let them escape from the fire of Gehenom and go into exile and become enslaved to other nations until they return to you the Holy One blessed be he answered him so be it then and so it was as it is written unless their rock had sold them to Aram 3230 who is their rock Abraham as it is written look to the rock whence you are hewn Yeshua 511 and Hashem had shut them up a bit refers to the Holy One blessed be he who agreed with him 353 Rabbi Yehuda said 50 days elapsed between the day Israel were let out from Egypt and the day the Torah was given to them what was the reason Rabbi Yehuda said in order that the number of days should correspond to the number of years of Jubilee which is Bina as it is written and you shall hallow the 50th year of Aikra 2510 namely the 50th gate in Bina 354 Rabbi Shimon said we have learned that it was the Jubilee which led Israel out from Egypt if you believe that it is Jubilee itself namely by itself it is not so the exodus occurred through the aspect of Jubilee and from the aspect of the same judgment was stirred up against the Egyptians therefore those 50 years are the 50 gates of Jubilee which is Bina 355 we have learned that the deeds in Egypt are mentioned 50 times in the Torah and in all of those times words of praise are said for example who have brought you out of the land of Egypt Shema 202 and, and brought you out Devarim 437 and for by strength of hand Hashem brought you out from this place Shema 133 50 times exactly and no more since all is adorned with Jubilee which is Bina and from the side of Jubilee everything comes and there are 50 gates to Bina therefore the Torah which comes from Bura is crowned in the right as it is written from his right hand went the fiery law for them Devarim 332 we have also learned that when the Torah was given there were five voices Jesus Bura Typhoret Netzach and Hot in Bina and all of these were seen in them included in them and crowned in Bina 356 Rabbi Shimon said at the time that Israel received the Torah that Jubilee which is Bina crowned the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and as a king is crowned in the midst of his hosts as it is written go forth O daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him Sher Hasherim 311 who is his Mother it is Yobel for Bina is called Jubilee Habubel and she is the mother of Zeir and been called Solomon the Jubilee was crowned with joy love and perfection as it is written be a joyful mother of children Tehillim 1139 who is the mother of children Rabbi Shimon said this is Jubilee 357 Rabbi Yehuda said concerning this it is written let your father and your mother be glad and let her who bore you rejoice Mishlei 2324 who are your father and your mother they are as explained in Safra to Zinaudel the concealed book relating to the verse the nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover Vayikra 177 woe to one who uncovers their nakedness for the secret of Chakma and Bina are called father and mother 358 Rabbi Yitzhak said we have learned that at the time that the Holy One blessed be he revealed himself on Mount Sinai the mountain began to shake and all the mountains on earth trembled and quaked and they rose and fell until the Holy One blessed be he stretched out his hand and calmed them and a voice was heard proclaiming what else you owe you see that you flee O Jordan that you are driven back you mountains that you skip like rams Tehillim 1144 to 5 359 and they answered him tremble you earth at the presence of the master Rabbi Yitzhak said at the presence of the master refers to I am a who is by as it is written a joyful mother of children tremble you earth refers to the lower I am a who is Malchut at the presence of the Eloha of Jacob is Abba who is Zeir and lower Abba as it is written Israel is my son my firstborn Shema 422 meaning Zeir and which is called Israel and of that it is written the crown with which his mother crowned him his mother being Bina 360 he asks what is the crown with which his mother crowned him and Rabbi Yitzhak replies this resembles the verse for Shal and his men compass David and his men round about Ishmuel 2326 which is like encircling for Zeir and is crowned and surrounded by Ima with white red and green all colors the secret of the three columns all of which are included and encircled in it Rabbi Yehuda asked in the verse the crown with which his mother crowned him what is the crown it has the same meaning as in Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 and, and I will glorify the house of my glory Yeshua 607 namely the first three Sfirot which are the glory of Zeir and which is called Israel and also Typhoret 361 Rabbi Yitzhak said that the Torah was given in a black fire engraved upon a white fire in order to include the right and the left and the left was returned to the right as it is written from his right hand went a fiery law for them 362 Rabbi Abba said when the smoke came out of Mount Sinai a fire ascended and was crowned with it openly and looked like cluster and it flared high and dwindled again and all the aromas of the Garden of Eden were blended in that smoke having the colors white red and black as it is written perfumed with myrrh and frankincense with all powders of the merchant Sher Hasherim 
made the tablets specially or whether they were really just sapphire as any other sapphire Rabbi Shimon says the tablets were formed of the supernal dew which flows from Atika Kaddish and that they pre-existed the creation of the world but were perfected on the sixth day of creation especially for this purpose the miracle was that one could read one side from the other we are told that the Torah actually literally restored the souls of Israel after they had flown away at the time that the people heard the words of God the text now turns to the rule of Solomon during which time the moon was full when Zedekiah came the moon waned and remained thus so Malchud was removed far from Zir and became dark the moon shone when Israel stood by Mount Sinai and it shone when Judah was found worthy to receive the kingdom 364 Rabbi Shia said when the letters were engraved upon the two tablets of stone they were visible on both sides the tablets were of sapphire engraved and covered with white fire and the letters were of black fire covered again and engraved with white fire upon both sides 365 Rabbi Abba said that the two tablets remained as they were that is complete without any change and the letters soared in the air and could be seen with both black and white fire in order to demonstrate the union of the right and the left for white is right and black is left as it is written length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor Mishle. 316 he asks is it not written from his right hand went the fiery law to them Devarim 332 and he answers that the Torah emanated from the side of Bureau which is the left and was included in the right side therefore it had an it black and white fire 366 as we learned it says the tablets had lichot were the work of Elohim Shema 3216 Rabbi Yehuda said that it is written lichot without Bob that is one in singular to indicate that although they were two they appeared as one and the ten commandments were engraved upon them one section of five being included in the other section of five so that all pertains to the right side in this way they were indeed the very work of Elohim 367 Rabbi Yitzhak said that the tablets were of sapphire for there were originally two sapphire stones which were rough hewn and the holy one blessed be he caused the wind to blow upon them and they were smoothed and transformed into two tablets Rabbi Yehuda said that they only looked like sapphire but were not of real sapphire and this is the meaning of the verse which describes them as the work of Elohim for if they were of sapphire they would have been like other precious stones and not the work of Elohim 368 he said to him if this is so the sapphire which is a stone more precious than any other is not the work of Elohim yet the whole creation is the work of Elohim so he explained to him how then do we explain the words were the work of Elohim they were indeed so they were a special work of Elohim not included in the works of creation yet come and behold it is written that the tablets were the work of Elohim it says the tablets not the stones were the work of Elohim for he blew upon the stones which were of real sapphire and they were transformed into two tablets as mentioned above 369 Rabbi Shimon said both are the same for both Rabbi Yosai's and Rabbi Yehuda's words lead to the same place these two tablets existed from before the creation of the world but were perfected on the sixth day of creation especially for this purpose thus they were a particular work of the Holy One blessed be he 370 he asks of what were they made and he answers we had learned that they were formed of the supernal dew which issues from Atika Kaddish of the Holy Ancient One being Keter when the supernal dew was descending on the field of the Holy Apple Trees Malchut the Holy One blessed be he took two drops causing them to solidify and turn into two precious Stones he blew on them and they became flat like tablets as it is written the work of Elohim and the writing was the writing of Elohim and written with the finger of Elohim Devarim 910 371 we learned that the finger of Elohim expanded into ten for the ten fingers correspond to the ten spirot and each one of them includes ten spirot as written written with the finger of Elohim each one of the fingers expanded into ten until a complete hand was formed as it is written in Yisrael. Saw that great work lit hand Shema 1431 thus here also the finger of Elohim is expanded into ten three hundred and seventy two Rabbi Yehuda said engraved upon the tablets the letters on the stones were pierced so that the writing could be seen from one side to the other and the writing was seen from both sides engraved means that the writing formed an engraving within an engraving through one side to the other according to Rabbi Abba it was possible to see one side from the other side and to read it. Writing thereon 373 Rabbi Lazar said they were written miraculously in order that every man would bear testimony that it was the writing of Elohim for none of the people in the world could conceive them as they really were 374 he asks according to those who say they were pierced through why does it not say that the writing was engraved in the tablets instead of upon the tablets and he answers we have learned that five sounds were on the right and five on the left and those of it left were included in the right and from the right one could see those of the left and here upon the tablets all was on the right because those five commandments of the left were included in those of the right therefore he who stood at one side could see what was on the other side and read the letters for the miracle with which the letters were engraved was that one could read one side from the other this does not apply to the front and back but to the right and left side because they were not Engraved through for we have learned that the left turned into the right as it is written from his right hand went the fiery law for them therefore assuredly it was the work of Elohim 375 he explains thus he who stood on one would read I am Hashem your Elohim and out of these letters he could see and read the words you shall not murder and he read you shall not have and could see and read the words you shall not commit adultery he read you shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain and at the same time he could see and read the words you shall not steal and it was thus with all the words from the right side and in the same way all those from the other side and they were all included one within the other this way of this it is said the writing of Elohim for assuredly it was the writing of Elohim Shema 3216 376 Rabbi Yussi said what is the point of the remark and Moses went down to the people and said to them Shema 1925 if what he said to them is not written Rabbi Yitzhak explained come and behold when a person expects some good fortune or misfortune to befall him before he knows what it is he cannot bear it it is because his heart will fly out from him for a time but once the best or the worst is known he is relaxed and can endure it it is all the more so in this case when Moses prepared them for that which was about to take place he strengthened their hearts with his words for otherwise they would not be able to bear all that was about to come therefore it is written and said to them and right after that an Elohim spoke Shema 201 377 despite all this they could not endure it for as we have been taught from Rabbi Yehuda who said in the name of Rabbi Shia in the name of Rabbi Yussi when they heard the words of the Holy One blessed be he their souls flew from them and ascended up to the throne of glory in order to cleave to it 378 the Torah said to the Holy One blessed be he was it for nothing that I was Fashion two thousand years before the creation of the world is it all in vain that in me it is inscribed whatever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn among you Vayikra one hundred and seventy eight and you shall speak to the children of Israel saying Vayikra two thousand four hundred and fifteen and for to me the children of Israel are servants Vayikra two thousand five hundred and fifty five where then are these children of Israel at that hour the Torah returned their souls to the children of Israel every one of them to its own place the Torah strengthened and took hold of the souls and gave them back to Israel as it is written the Torah of Hashem is perfect restoring the soul Tehillim one hundred and ninety eight restoring literally as it restored the souls of Israel after they flew away from them three hundred and seventy nine we have learned that the verses then Solomon sat on the throne of Hashem as king I two thousand nine hundred and twenty three and the throne had six steps I may Lashem one thousand and nineteen correspond to the six Farah Chesed Bure Tifer at Netzach and Yezid therefore it is called the throne of Hashem Rabbi Abba said that the moon was then full as we learned that in the days of King Solomon the moon was in its fullness meaning that the Nukba of Zeir Anpin which is called moon was in her fullness three hundred and eighty he asks when was the moon which is Malchut in its fullness and he answers when it was established by fifteen kings as we learned Abraham Isaac Jacob Judah Peretz Chetzer and Ram Ammon Adab Nachshon Shalman Boaz Obed Yishai David and Solomon when Solomon sat on his Throne the moon which is Malchut was in its fullness therefore it is written and Solomon sat on the throne of Hashem as king which is Malchut it is also written the throne had six steps corresponding to the sixth fire of Malchut she said Bureau Tifer at Netzach and Yezid having the same model as above 381 in the days of Zedekiah the moon which is Malchut was waning and was defective as it is
Became dark 383 We have learned that when Yisrael stood by Mount Sinai the moon began to shine as it is written he bowed the heavens also and came down to Shmuel 2210 meaning that the sun which is Zeir and and is called heavens approached the moon which is Malchut and the moon began to shine as is expressed in the verse and on the east side towards the rising of the sun shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch by their hosts Bar 23 Judah is the chariot of Malchut and the east side signifies shining and illumination 384 on Mount Sinai Judah was appointed chief in the kingdom as it is written but Judah still rules with hell and is faithful with holy ones Hashia 121 faithful with holy ones meaning that when the holy one blessed be he said to Israel and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation Shemot 196 Judah was found trustworthy to receive the kingship and the moon which is Malchut began to shine. Section 22 I am Hashem your Elohim we are told that the Torah includes all this Farah and that we must never forsake it the commandments of the Torah cling to the body of Zerah and so that when a person sins he transgresses against the body of the king when the Torah was given by and her children male and female were in perfect harmony but if a person sins it removes the mother from her children Rabbi Lazer now tells us that God created heaven and earth simultaneously one with his right hand and the other with his left in the grave called righteous the newly created heavens long for the earth as a man longs to join with a woman and a holy river of oil comes from the head of the king and pours itself out upon the earth just as the male injects seed into the female Rabbi Yitzhak now asks where Hashem went when he came down upon Mount Sinai Rabbi Yossi said he came lower and lower down through the graves until he reached earth and he went toward the Sheshanahu. Stood there hence your and descended and united with the Sheshanah 385 I am Hashem your Elohim who have brought you out Shema 202 Rabbi Lazer opened the discussion with the verse My son hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the Torah of your mother Mishle 18 My son hear the instruction of your father refers to the Holy One blessed be he meaning Zeir and do not forsake the Torah of your mother refers to the congregation of Israel which is by as it is Written to perceive the words of understanding had by Mishle 11 386 according to Rabbi Yehuda the instruction of your father is Chakma called Abba and father and do not forsake the Torah of your mother is by Rabbi Yitzhak said that both of the interpretations mean the same thing for as we have learned the Torah emanated from the supernal Chakma and Chakma lit wisdom I divided into the right called Abba and the left called I am a Rabbi Yossi said that the Torah Emanated from Bina for it is written to perceive the words of understanding and also do not forsake the Torah of your mother and Bina is called Ima and mother 387 Rabbi Yehuda said the Torah includes both Chakma and Bina as it is written my son hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the Torah of your mother Rabbi Abba said that the Torah contains all the Sfirat since once it combines both Chakma and Bina it combines all the Sfirat for Chakma and Bina. Include all the Sfirat Chisa judgment and mercy, being Chisa Bura and Tiferet, in all required perfection when the king and the queen are joined with IT all the others are joined with IT for wherever Chakma and Bina are found all the others are found as well 388 Rabbi Yossi said Ishema 202 is the Sheshana as it is written I will go down with you into Egypt Bershi 464 Rabbi Yitzhak said that I which is the Sheshana is separated by a trope after the word I there is a Total pause between it and the next words Hashem your Elohim the same as in I am Esau your firstborn Bershi 2719 which means I am who I am Esau is your firstborn therefore Hashem your Elohim is the Holy One blessed be he that is Zeir and as it is said out of heaven he made you hear his voice Devarim 436 and heaven is Zeir and it is also written you have seen that I have talked with you from heaven Shema 2019 from heaven indeed for this is the Holy One blessed be he namely Zeir and 389 who have Asher have brought you out of the land of Egypt Shema 202 Asher means a place which everyone calls happy have Asher which is Bina brought you out of Egypt designates Jubilee which is Bina called Asher who have brought you out of the land of Egypt for as we have learned the aspect of Jubilee which is Bina was the cause of Israel's exodus from Egypt therefore this event is mentioned 50 times in the Torah 50 days passed from the exodus to the receiving of the Torah and fifty years had to pass for the liberation of the slaves for all these events correspond to the fifty gates of Bina 390 out of the house of bondage as it is written Hashem smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt Shema 1229 we have learned that this signifies the lower crowns in which the Egyptians had faith as there is a house above there is one below a holy house above as it is said through wisdom a house is built Mishle 243 and an unholy house below in the Klippot as it is written out of the house of bondage 391 we have learned that when the I was proclaimed all those commandments of the Torah which were united with the supernal holy king which is Zeir and were comprised in this word I 392 as we have already learned all the commandments of the Torah clung to the body of the king which is Zeir and some of them to his head some to his hands and some to his feet and none of them ever step out and become separate from the body of the king therefore he who transgresses even one of the commandments of the Torah is as though he transgresses against the body of the king as it is written and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have rebelled against me Yeshayah 6624, against me literally woe to the wicked who break the words of the Torah and do not know what they do 393 thus said Rabbi Shimon the very place against which a sinner has committed a sin reveals the sin when a sin has been committed against the Holy One blessed be he as mentioned above the Holy One blessed be he reveals his sin as it is written the heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him Yoh 2027 the heaven shall reveal his iniquity signifies the Holy One blessed be he meaning Zeir and been called heaven and the earth shall rise up against him signifies the congregation of Israel namely Malchut which is called earth 394 we have learned that the heaven Zeir and been Reveals a man's sin and at that time the earth which is Malchut executes judgment on the sinner as it is written and the earth shall rise up against him to punish him Rabbi Yossi said in the name of Rabbi Shimon that when the Torah was given the mother which is Bina and the children which are male and female were in perfect harmony as it is written and be a joyful mother of children Tehillim 1139 395 I am Hashem your Elohim I is as we have learned that Abraham the patriarch had a daughter it is the Sheshanah who is a daughter Hashem your Elohim signifies Zeir and which is called Israel as it is written Israel is my son my firstborn Shema 422 it is also written she is the tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishle 318 this signifies Zeir and which is called the tree of life this is the son 396 who have brought you out of the land of Egypt it is as it is written for it is a jubilee it shall be holy to you Vayikra 2512 namely Bina it is also written and be a joyful mother of children and and you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty of the is Bina which is called the 50th year and also called I am a thus there are mother and children the mother has been brought to us from the land of Egypt and the children I the daughter and Hashem your Elohim the son is mentioned above thus the mother and children were there all in joy and completeness of this it is written a joyful mother of children when the mother is gone everybody is gone from their place as written you shall not take the mother bird together with the young Devarim 226 we have learned that the meaning of this verse is that a man should be careful not to sin below as that causes the removal of the mother from the children 397 Rabbi Yitzhak said that all this Farah mentioned above refer to the Holy One blessed be he who is everything and this thing is disclosed to the reapers of the field meaning to those who already have the merit to know the secrets of the Torah and who shall reap and joy Tehillim 1264 meaning those who have received their grades from Malchut which is called field happy they are in this world and in the world to come 398 Rabbi Lazer said it is written in the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth Bereshit 11 the heaven preceding the earth and in the day that Hashem Elohim made the earth and the heavens Bereshit 24 the earth preceding the heaven how can we reconcile these verses which contradict each other he answers we learned that both were created together we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he stretched out his right hand and created the heavens and then he stretched out his left hand and created the earth therefore it first says the heaven and the earth and later the earth and the heavens 399 it is written and it shall come to pass on that day that I will respond says Hashem I will answer the heavens and they shall 
Answer the earth, Hashia 223, I will answer the heavens, namely the heavens themselves, Zeir and as it is written, heaven is my throne, Yeshia 661, for Bina says, Zeir and is my throne, and they shall answer the earth, the earth herself, Malchut as it is written, and the earth is my footstool, of the heaven refer to the supernal heaven, Zeir and and the earth to the supernal earth, which is Malchut, for as we have learned when the heavens were created, they longed for the earth, this occurs in the great called righteous as it is written, the righteous is an everlasting lid of the world foundation, Mishle 1025, and it cleaved to that earth, 400, a holy river of the oil of anointment comes from the head of the king, the three first Sfirat of Zeir and to the place wherein this righteous dwells, who is Yezid of Zeir and and pours itself out in fullness of desire upon this earth, which is Malchut, the earth having received it, thence nourishes all both above and below this. Happens the same way as the male having the desire to unite with the female brings out of the top of his head a seed of propagation into the male organ and injects it in the female from which she conceives thus all parts of the body cleave to the female and the female receives everything according to this model we have learned that the one who completes the first ten people who come to pray in a synagogue receives their merits Rabbi Yossi says that he is considered as ten for they correspond to the tenth Farah and he corresponds to Malchut namely the Nukva who receives all as mentioned above 401 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written he bowed the heavens also and came down to Shmuel 2210 and in the Torah it is written and Hashem will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai Shemot 1911 when he came down to where did he go down you may think it was to Sinai as written in the Torah yet it says upon lid above Mount Sinai and not on Mount Sinai 402 he Explains he bowed the heavens also and came down to where did he descend? Rabbi Yossi said he descended down his grades from grade to grade from crown to crown until he reached this earth which is Malchut. Then the moon Malchut shone and stood in its fullness. Therefore it is written he bowed the heaven also and came down to this earth. Then it says upon Mount Sinai who stood upon Mount Sinai the Shechinah did and he descended towards her. Four hundred and three Rabbi Abba said from the following verses we learn that he descended towards the Shechinah for it is written because Hashem descended upon it in fire. Shemot 1918 and for Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire. Devarim 424 which is the Shechinah towards whom he descended. He questions further yet it says then Hashem rained upon Sdom and upon Emora brimstone and fire from Hashem out of heaven. Bereshit 1924 thus Ceir himself is the fire part of which rained upon Sdom. He answers then Hashem rained signifies the earth which is. The Shechinah for then and Hashem indicates he and his courthouse which is the Shechinah from which the fire was issued upon SDO and whence did she receive it the second part of the verse from Hashem out of heaven explained that she received from heaven itself being Zeir Enpin and whatever the Shechinah has she receives from Zeir Enpin from Hashem out of heaven the heaven themselves which is Zeir Enpin for whatever the Shechinah has she receives from Zeir Enpin Rabbi Shia said that this verse signifies that he descended and became united with the Shechinah and Elohim spoke all these words saying Shema 201 Elohim is the Shechinah all means the inclusion of everything being Zeir Enpin upon whom everything and everyone depends hence Zeir Enpin descended and united with the Shechinah section 23 you shall not have we learned that when a man is circumcised he enters into the covenant established by Abraham however this is only a beginning for he must also obey the commandments of the Torah in order to enter the grade of Adam. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shizkiah speak about how vital to their understanding is the wisdom of Rabbi Shimon who is such a light to everyone. Rabbi Shimon when encountered teaches them that the prayer of the poor man is more effective than all others for the poor are nearer to God than anyone else's. He says that God dwells in broken vessels in those who are brokenhearted and humble and that if we harm the poor we wrong the Sheshanah 404 you shall have no other Elohim beside me. Shema 203 according to Rabbi Yitzhak other Elohim excludes the Sheshanah and thus you shall have no other Elohim than the Sheshanah called Elohim beside me. Let my face excludes the face of the king upon which the holy king is manifested. It is his name and his name is it the visible face is his name which is Malchut and his name is the visible face he is his name and Zeir and is his name which means they are one. As it is written, I am Hashem, that is my name, Yeshayah 428, and his name are one, blessed be his name forever and ever, 405, Rabbi Shimon taught, blessed are Yisrael for the Holy One, blessed be he called them, and as it is written, but you my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, Yashiskel 3431, and also if a man of you bring an offering, Vayikra 12, why are they called men, the reason is found in the verse, you that did cleave to Hashem, your Elohim, Devarim 44, you and not the heathen. Nations therefore you are called men, and they are not 406, Rabbi Shimon continued with his explanations, when a Jewish boy is circumcised, he enters into the covenant which the Holy One, blessed be he made with Abraham, as it says, and Hashem had blessed Abraham in all things, Bereshit 241, and loyal love to Abraham, which is 720, thus he begins to enter into that place, and when he commences to keep the precepts of the Torah, he enters the great of Adam, man, that of the supernal chariot, and Becomes attached to the body of the king, then he is called man. 407. The seed of Israel is called man. Come and behold, of Ishmael it is written, and he will be a wild man. Bereshit 1612. A wild man and not a man. He was called a wild man because he was circumcised, and therefore he had the beginnings of being a man, as it is written. And Ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Bereshit 1725. Since his circumcision, he entered to the grade which is called all which is yet. Hence he was not called a man, but a wild man. His hand will be against every man. Let in all. Bereshit 1612. Assuredly, in all and no more, because he did not accept the commandments of the Torah. He had to start being circumcised, but was not perfected through the commandments of the Torah. But the seed of Israel, who were perfected in all things, is called man in the full sense, as it is written. For Hashem's portion is his people. Jacob is the Lot of his inheritance to Barim 329, 408. Rabbi Yossi said, therefore, the engraving and painting of all faces is permitted except the face of a man. Rabbi Yitzhak said that when a human form is represented, it looks engraved with an engraving of perfection that is a special perfection is perceived therein. Rabbi Yehuda said this accords with the popular saying, the form of the spirit is in the image, meaning that according to the image of the man formed, his connection with the spirit within him is recognized. 409. Rabbi Yehuda was once going from Cappadocia to Lot to see Rabbi Shimon who was there, and Rabbi Shiskiah accompanied him. Rabbi Yehuda said to Rabbi Shiskiah, what Rabbi Shimon taught us concerning the meaning of the term wild man is perfectly true and quite clear, but what is the meaning of the second part of the verse which says, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren? Bereshit 1612, 410. He replied, I have heard no interpretation and I shall not give. Any for we learned that and this is the Torah which Moses said Israel Devarim 444 that which Moses said you can speak of but what Moses did not say meaning what was not taught by one's teacher one cannot tell 411 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with that verse for he is your life and the length of your days Devarim 3020 he who is worthy of the Torah and does not separate himself from her is worthy of two lives life in this world and life in the world to come as it is written your life literally in a plural form which means to he who separates himself from her separates himself from life and he who separates himself from Rabbi Shimon separates himself from all things 412 here is a verse to which Rabbi Shimon already opened the door yet we cannot enter it how much more difficult will it be for us to understand these words of the Torah woe to the generation from which Rabbi Shimon will be removed for as long as we are in his presence the springs of the heart are open on every direction and everything is revealed but as soon as we separate ourselves from him we know nothing and all the springs are closed 413 Rabbi Shizkiah said as it is written and he took the spirit that was upon him and gave it to the 70 elders Bibit Bar 1125 it was like a light of a candle from which many lights are kindled it remains whole and its light stands in its fullness even though many candles were lit by it Rabbi Shimon Bar Yukai is such a light he illuminates everyone and yet his light is not diminished but remains steadfast in its full
is pleasing to the Holy One, blessed be he for the world is sustained him, woe to him against whom the poor man complains to his master for the poor man is nearer to the king than anyone else as it is written when he cries to me that I will hear Shema 2226 416 as for other people sometimes he hears them and sometimes he does not what is the reason for this the Holy One, blessed be he dwells in broken vessels as it is written yet with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Yeshua 5715 and Hashem is near to them who are of a broken heart Tehillim 3419 and also a broken and a contrite heart Elohim you will not despise Tehillim 5119 417 hence we have learned that he who wrongs the poor man wrongs the Sheshana as it is written yet with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit and also for Hashem will plead their cause Mishle 2223 for Hashem is their protector and he rules everywhere and needs no witnesses and no other judge he does not accept Pledges like other judges accept those of the souls as it is written and rob of life those who rob them Mishle 2223 418 he continued with his explanations of prayer had tefillah of the afflicted wherever the word tefillah is mentioned it signifies something supernal for it ascends to a supernal place tefillah and phylactery of the head is the tefillin which the king puts namely the mokin of zeir and which are called head tefillin 419 rabbi shimon turned his head and saw rabbi yehuda and rabbi shizkiah approaching him when he had finished he looked at them and said you look as if you have lost something valuable for they had heard words of torah which they forgot they replied yes for the master opened the precious door and yet we cannot enter into it 420 what is it he asked they said to him what is the meaning of the last part of the verse and he will be a wild man which is and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren the beginning of the verses clear to us but what of this the end does not seem to suit the beginning 421 then rabbi shimon replied upon your life both parts of the verse have one significance and point to the same truth we know that the holy one blessed be he has many aspects faces upon aspects there is a shining aspect a dull aspect a low aspect a distant aspect an external aspect an inner aspect the right aspect and the left aspect 422 come and behold happy are israel before the holy one blessed be he for they are united with the most supernal aspect of the king with the aspect in which he and his name are one while other nations are united with the most distant aspect the lower aspect and therefore they are at a great distance from the body of the king for we see that all those egyptians who are related to ishmael and his many kin and relatives were all connected with the lower and distant aspects 423 ishmael however when he was circumcised had the privilege for abraham's sake of having his dwelling place and his portion in the sphere which dominated all those distant and lower aspects rather than in the aspects of the other nations therefore it says of him his hand will be against every man lit in all the word all signifies yes therefore he shall dwell in the presence lit above the face of all his brethren meaning that he will be in a superior dwelling to any of them as in all rules over all the aspects that are below hence above the face of all his brethren for they had no such merit 424 then rabbi yehuda and rabbi shizkiah approached him and kissed his hands rabbi yehuda said this is an illustration of the proper wine settled on its leaves and a bubbling spring is a crown over earth and dross for it covers it and when the spring is about to break through the earth it becomes more powerful thus ishmael ruled powerfully over the dross of his brothers who were connected with the lower and distant aspects as mentioned above woe to the world when the master is gone from it woe to the generation in which time it will happen happy is the generation that is privileged to know him and in which he lives 425 rabbi shizkiah said we have learned that a proselyte when circumcised is merely called the proselyte of righteousness and nothing more and yet according to your interpretation of this verse master his hand will be against every man lit in all meaning that he had the merit to dwell in yezid which is called all rabbi shimon replied all is attached to the same place yet we were speaking of converts ishmael was not merely a proselyte for he was a son of abraham a son of a holy man and of ishmael it says behold i have blessed him Beersheet 1720 it says here i have blessed him and elsewhere and hashem blessed abraham in all Beersheet 241 this blessing here too is in all therefore of ishmael it is written his hand in all 426 therefore it is written and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren for proselytes from among other nations Ishmael's kin would be called proselytes of righteousness and no more but he is superior to them all moreover he dwells higher than the aspects of those who were not circumcised and were connected with the distant and lower aspects and the aspects of the heathen nations therefore it is written and he shall dwell in the presence lit above the faces of all his brethren Rabbi Yehuda said hence the proclamation of the Holy One blessed be he you shall have no other Elohim beside me lit over my face for his face is Malchut called face section 24 you shall not make you shall not make for yourself any carved idol or any likeness in this section we are reminded not to attach interpretations to the Torah without knowing the correct meaning or without having learned them from our teacher we are reminded not to be false to the Holy Name and not to be false to the covenant of Abraham by bringing it into a foreign Domain 427 You shall not make for yourself any carved idol or any likeness Shema 204 This was already explained Rabbi Yossi added any form of a face one can make except that of a man for a man's face rules over all things 428 There is also another explanation of the verse You shall not make any carved idol or any likeness Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion with the verse Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin Kahila 55 How careful one must be not to err in regard to the meaning of the words of the Torah and not to attach interpretations to the Torah without knowing the correct meaning or having learned them from his teacher for whoever speaks of scripture without knowledge or learning from his Rabbi It says You shall not make any carved idol or any likeness The Holy One blessed be he will punish him in the world to come when his soul shall desire to enter its place it will then be repelled and it will be cut off from that region which is bound up with it. Bundle of life wherein are the other souls 429 Rabbi Yehuda said from this we understand the verse why should the Elohim be angry at your voice Kahila 55 your voice signifies the soul of a man Rabbi Shia said of this it is written for I Hashem your Elohim am jealous al Shema 205 he is zealous above all for his name when he sees an image of a face or one who is false to his name or when the Torah is misinterpreted with an explanation one had not learned from his teachers 430 we have learned that the whole Torah is a holy name for there is not a word written which is not included in the holy name therefore one must be aware of erring in regard to his holy name and one must not be false to it he who is false to the supernal king will not be allowed to enter the king's palace and will be driven away from the world to come 431 Rabbi Abba cited the verse you shall not make for yourself any carved idol head and in another place it is written you have pace all for Yourself two tablets of stone Shema 341 meaning you shall not hew another Torah which you neither know nor have learned from your master why because I Hashem your Elohim am a jealous El and I shall punish you in the world to come meaning it is I who will punish you in the world to come when your soul shall long to stand in my presence how many emissaries will then be ready to frustrate its desire and thrust it into Gehenna 432 Rabbi Yitzhak said you shall not make means that one should not be false to the name of the Holy One blessed be he for Israel entered into the first covenant and union with the Holy One blessed be he when they circumcised for this was the first condition to enter the covenant of Abraham the bond with the Sheshana and one must not be false to that covenant for he that is false to that covenant is false to the Holy One blessed be he what is this falsehood the bringing of the covenant into a foreign domain as it is written and has married the Daughter of a strange El Malachi 211 433 Rabbi Yehuda said hence they have dealt treacherously against Hashem for they have begotten strange children Hashia 57 whoever is false to the covenant is false to the Holy One blessed be he because the covenant is united with him therefore it is written you shall not make for yourself any carved idol or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above section 25 you shall not bow down to them Rabbi Lazar explains why it is forbidden to marry any woman from a heathen nation for the result is always rebellious children who inherit the taint of idolatry we are reminded that we who keep the commandments of the Torah are the children of Hashem 434 you shall not bow down to them nor serve them Shema 205 Rabbi Lazar was once walking in company with Rabbi Shia Rabbi Shia said it is written and you see among the captives a beautiful woman Devarim 2111 why does the Torah allow marriage to her? Is it written you shall not make marriages with them?
Purity that of the Holy Covenant for in this holy possession he unites himself with the Holy One blessed be he this is all the more so if he keeps the commandments of the Torah then the king stretches out his right hand to receive him and he cleaves to the Holy Body namely Z-E-I-R-N and therefore it is written of Yisrael but you that did cleave to Hashem your Elohim Devarim 44 and you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 literally children as it is written Yisrael is my son my Firstborn Shema 422 and Yisrael in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 section 26 You shall not take the name Rabbi Shimon tells us that the supernal blessing requires something to bless that it cannot dwell on an empty place one cannot say a blessing over an empty table the discussion turns to a good name is better than precious ointment which Rabbi Lazar says represents the supernal mountains of pure balsam it is vital never to take the name of the holy one in vain and that name must be uttered only after a preceding word Rabbi Yusi tells us that the blessing is the holy name itself the source of blessing for the whole universe 437 you shall not take the name Shema 207 Rabbi Shimon cited the verse and Elisha said to her what shall I do for you tell me what have you in the house to Melashim 42 he explained what Elisha meant was have you ought upon which the blessing of the holy one blessed be he could rest for one should not say the blessing after the meal over an empty table why because the supernal blessing cannot rest on an empty place 438 therefore it is necessary to put a loaf or more on the table before one says his grace and in case one has not much to put on the table he must put at least the remnants of his meal in order that there will be something to bless so that he will not say a blessing over an empty table 439 when she said your handmaid has nothing in the house except a pot of oil but he said this is fit to receive a perfect blessing as it is written a good name is better than live from precious ointment Kahilat 71 for the holy name comes forth from oil to bless and to kindle the holy lights he asked what is this oil and Rabbi Yitzhak said it represents the same oil as described in the scripture it is like the precious ointment upon the head tail in 1332 meaning the supernal plenty Rabbi Lazar said it represents the supernal mountains of pure balsam meaning the plenty of it Supernal by 440 Rabbi Shimon interpreted the verse a good name is better how good is the supernal name of the supernal holy lights for they radiate precious ointment and a man must not mention the name of the holy one blessed be he in vain for he who does so would have been better not to have been born 441 Rabbi Lazar said one should utter the holy name only after a preceding word as in the Torah it is mentioned for the first time after two words in the beginning Elohim created Hebrew Rishi Parah Elohim 442 Rabbi Shimon said the holy name is mentioned only in connection with the completed world namely Yudi Hei as it is written in the day that Hashem Elohim made the earth and the heavens Bereshit 24 from this it follows that one should not mention the holy name in vain as it is written you shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain Shema 207 443 Rabbi Yossi said what is the blessing it is the holy name being the source of Blessing for the whole universe a blessing does not dwell in an empty place nor rests upon it and therefore it is written you shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain section 27 remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy this very long section tells of the blessings enjoyed that accrue from observing the three Sabbath meals properly he who blemishes one of these meals will be made to bear three burdens judgment in Gehenna Armageddon and Pre-Messianic tribulations we are told that on festivals and holidays one must share with the poor because all the faith is centered in the Sabbath a man is given an additional soul on this day and all judgments are withheld Rabbi Yehuda tells us that the Sabbath is of equal importance to the Torah and that one who keeps the Sabbath is considered as having fulfilled the Torah Rabbi Shimon tells about the verse for thus says Hashem to the eunuchs explaining that those who study Torah are like eunuchs for Six nights but on the Sabbath they have conjugal union this being the right time to unite the matron with the king and they are blessed with good and holy children 444 remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy Shema 208 Rabbi Yitzhak cited the verse and Elohim blessed the seventh day Bereshit 23 of the manna it is written six days you shall gather it but on the seventh day which is Shabbat on it there shall be none Shema 1626 he asks if there was no food on that day what blessing is attached to it 445 we have learned that all blessing from above and from below depend upon the seventh day and we have also learned that there was no manna on the seventh day because all the six supernal days which are Chesed, Burei, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot and Yezid derive their blessing from it and each of them sends forth nourishment to the world below from the blessing it received from the seventh day 446 therefore he who has attained the grade of faith must prepare a table and a meal on Shabbat Eve so that his table may be blessed all through the other six days for at that time blessing is prevalent for all the six weekdays for no blessing is found at an empty table therefore one should make ready the table on Shabbat Eve with bread and other foods in order to derive blessings for all the six days 447 Rabbi Yitzhak said also on Shabbat day one should prepare the table with meals and draw blessing for the other six days Rabbi Yehuda added one must enjoy himself on this day with three meals in order that there will be satisfaction and pleasure in the world on that day 448 Rabbi Yehuda explained that the reason for preparing three meals for Shabbat is in order that blessings may spread to the supernal days Chesed, Burei, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot and Yezid which receive their blessing from that day which is the Shechinah the seventh attribute on this day the head of Zer and meaning the three first Tfirat is filled with the due meaning plenty which Descends from the most hidden Atika Kaddish of the Holy Ancient One, he causes it to descend into the field of holy apple trees, which is the Shechinah three times after the entrance of the Shabbat, in order that all may enjoy the blessing. 449 Therefore, a man should enjoy these three times for their independence, the true faith in Atika Kaddish, in Zer and, and the field of holy apple trees, meaning that Zeir and receives from Atika and transfers it to Malchut, as is mentioned above, he who lessens. The number of the meals exposes a blemish into the regions above, and his punishment will be great. 450 Therefore, it is necessary to prepare the table with three meals after the entrance of the Shabbat, and his table must not be empty, thus, blessing will rest upon it during all the other weekdays for their independence, the true faith above. 451 Rabbi Shimon said, When a man has completed the three meals on Shabbat, a voice comes forth and proclaims of him, and shall you delight yourself in. Hashem Yeshua 5814 This is in reference to one meal which corresponds to the most holy ancient one among the holy and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth if it is the second meal which corresponds to the field of holy apple trees which is Malchut and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father if it is the perfection it reaches in Zer and in the third meal 452 corresponding to this one should complete the meals and find joy in each and all of them because this is a manifestation of perfected faith therefore Shabbat is more precious than all other times and holidays because it contains all in itself whereas no other times or holidays do so Rabbi Shia said because all things are in it it is mentioned three times and by the seventh day Elohim ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done and Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it Bereshi 22 to 3 453 when Rabbi Abba sat at his Shabbat meals he used to rejoice in each one of them and he would say this is the holy meal of the holy ancient hidden to all over another he would say this is the meal of the holy one blessed be he namely Zeir and so in each and every meal and when he came to the last one he would say the meals of the faith are completed 454 when Rabbi Shimon sat at his meals he would say prepare the meal of the supernal faith prepare the meal of the king and then he would sit and rejoice when the third meal was completed it was proclaimed of him then shall you delight yourself in Hashem and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father 455 Rabbi Lazar said to his father how are those three meals prepared Rabbi Shimon replied at Shabbat as it is written and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and this night the matron is blessed and the whole field of apples which is Malchut is also Blessed and the man's table is blessed and a soul is added to a man this night signifies the rejoicing of the matron and therefore a man should rejoice and partake in the meal of the matron which is Malchut 456 concerning the second meal of Shabbat day it is written and shall you delight yourself in live above Hashem most
The burden of three things of punishment in Gehenna, the war of Gog and Magog, Armageddon and Pre-Messianic Tribulations 459 come and behold on all festivals and holidays a man must both rejoice himself and give joy to the poor if he rejoices alone and does not share with the poor his punishment will be great for he rejoices himself and does not make others happy of him it is written and spread dung upon your faces even the dung of your feasts Malachi 23 but he is not punished if he rejoices on Shabbat and does not give a share to another for it is written the dung of your feasts and not the dung of your Shabbat and it is also written your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hates Yeshua 114 but Shabbat is not mentioned 460 therefore it is written between me and the children of Israel and because all the faith is centered in Shabbat man is given an additional soul on this day a supernal soul a soul in which all perfection exists resembling that of the world to come therefore this day is called Shabbat what does the word Shabbat mean this is the name of the Holy One blessed be he which is Malchut the name which is perfect on all sides on Shabbat day 461 Rabbi Yossi said it is indeed so woe to a man who does not complete the joy of the Holy King and what is his joy those three meals of the faith the meals wherein Abraham Isaac and Jacob participate and express joy upon joy and the faith Malchut is perfect on all sides 462 we have learned that on this day the fathers who are Chesed Bura and Tiferet are crowned for they become the first three Sfirat and all the children Netzach Hot and Yezid suckle from them differently than on other festive and holy days on this day all judgments are held back and are not aroused but they become the first three Sfirat on this day the sinners resting Gehenom on this day the Torah which is Zeir and is crowned with perfect crowns meaning the supernal Abba and IMA on this day joy and Gladness resound throughout 250 worlds 463 come and behold on all six days of the week when the hour of Mincha the afternoon prayer arrives stern judgment rules and all the chastisements are aroused but on Shabbat at the time of Mincha the will of all wills is present and Atika Kaddish the holy ancient one shows goodwill and all the judgments rest and gladness and joy are everywhere 464 in this time of goodwill Moses the holy faithful prophet passed away from this world in order that it should be known that he was not taken away in time of judgment at that hour his soul departed by the will of the holy ancient one and was treasured in him therefore it is written no man knows his grave Devarim 346 as the holy ancient one is the most hidden of all whom neither those above nor those below can comprehend so the soul was hidden by the will of the holy ancient one at the hour of Shabbat afternoon prayer the soul of which it is written no man knows his Grave is the most hidden of all hidden things in the world and judgment does not rule over it. Happy is the portion of Moses 465. We have learned that on this Shabbat day with which the Torah crowned itself, it crowns itself with everything with all those commandments, with all those decrees and punishments and with 70 branches of light which illuminate all sides. For the seven Sfirat are Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazet and Malchut and each one of them includes ten Sfirat and all of them together are 70 who saw the twigs which emanate from each branch of the 70 branches five of which are within the tree itself, meaning the five Sfirat, Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach and Hot of Zeir and called the tree which receives them from but all the aspects are attached to them who saw all those gates which open to each and every side of them as each one includes ten so that together there are fifty gates they all shine and glow by that never ending stream of light. 466 A voice proclaims awake supernal saints awake holy people chosen from above and from below raise joy before your master awake in perfect joy prepare yourselves in the threefold joy of the three fathers meaning the three meals of Shabbat prepare yourselves for the faith the joy of all joys happy is your portion holy Israel in this world and in the world to come this is your heritage over and above that of all heathen nations hence it is written between me and the children of Israel 467 Rabbi Yehuda said it is indeed so and therefore it is written remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy Shema 208 and you shall be holy for I Hashem your Elohim am holy Vayikra 192 and, and call the Shabbat a delight the holy day of Hashem 468 we have learned that on this Shabbat day all the souls of the righteous feast on the delights of Atika Kaddish the holy ancient one the most hidden of all Keter one spirit of this delight of Atika Kaddish is extended through all the worlds. It ascends and descends and spreads abroad to all the holy children to all the guardians of the Torah so that they enjoy perfect rest for getting all cares all penalties and all hard work as it is written and it shall come to pass on the day that Hashem shall give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and from the hard bondage in which you were made to serve Yeshua 143 469 therefore the Shabbat is equal in importance to the Torah and he who keeps the Shabbat is regarded as one who fulfills the whole Torah it is written happy is the man that does this and the son of man that lays hold on it that keeps the Shabbat and does not profane it and keeps his hand from doing any evil Yeshua 562 from this we understand that he who keeps the Shabbat is as if he kept the whole Torah 471 day Rabbi Yudai met Rabbi Shimon on the road and asked him to explain the verse concerning the weekly portion wherein Isaiah says for thus says Hashem to the eunuchs that keep my Shabbat and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant to them will I give in my house and within my walls of it four to five what does this mean 471 Rabbi Shimon said Cappadocian naming him after the name of the city he lived in fasten your donkey to a fence and a life for words of Torah require attentiveness turn around and follow me and pay attention he replied it is for the master's sake that I have come all this long way and in following him I shall behold it Sheshanah 472 he said to him come and behold this verse has already been considered by the friends but they have not explained it sufficiently for thus says Hashem to the eunuchs who are these eunuchs these are students of the Torah who study Torah and make themselves eunuchs during the six days of the week and on Shabbat night they hasten to have their conjugal union for they know the supernal secret of the right time when the matron is united with the king 473 those students who know the secret concentrate their hearts on the faith of their master and are blessed with offspring on that night therefore it is written that keep my Shabbat as it is said in the verse but his father kept the matter in mind Beersheet 3711 474 they are called eunuchs because they wait for the Shabbat in order to please their master as it is written and choose the things that please me meaning his union with the matron and take hold of my covenant amounts to the same as it also means a union my covenant without attribute is the supernal Yezid who is united with the matron happy is the man who is sanctified in this holiness and knows the secret 475 come and behold in the verse six days shall you labor and do all your work but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Hashem your Elohim Shema 209 the words all your work indicate that in those six days man must work and therefore those who study the Torah have their conjugal union only at a time when they do not Work but when the Holy One blessed be he works, meaning in Shabbat when man's work is forbidden and his work is a union with the matron Malchut in order to bring forth holy souls into the world 476 therefore the companions sanctify themselves on this night in the holiness of their master and concentrate their hearts and begot good and holy children who turn neither to the right nor to the left children of the king and the matron of them it is written you are the children of Hashem. Your Elohim to 141 assuredly of Hashem your Elohim for they are called his children the children of the king and the matron 477 those who study the Torah know the secret and cling to it therefore they are called the children of the Holy One blessed be he and the world is sustained by their merit and when the world is placed on trial the Holy One blessed be he looks on his children and has mercy on the world therefore it is written an entirely right seed your Maya 221 it is it. Rightly true seed indeed and what does true mean this is the perfect and holy circle this is expressed in the verse you will show truth to Jacob Misha 720 Jacob is the secret of the central column and all these verses refer to the same thing hence it is assuredly a true seed 478 Rabbi Yudai said to him blessed be the merciful one who sent me here blessed be the merciful one for allowing me to come and hear your words Rabbi Yudai with Rabbi Shimon asked why do you weep he answered I weep because of those people whose ways are the ways of beasts without knowledge and observation it would have been better for them not to have been created woe to the world when you master will depart from it for who will then reveal the secrets and who will then comprehend the ways of the Torah 479 he said to him upon your life the world is created only for those who are occupied in Torah and know its secrets
Jerusalem Yeshaya 626 meaning the external aspect of the Shechina memorial lit a hand and a name means that they would draw holy souls from this place the Shechina and that hand means a portion of perfection the word better means abundant with sons and daughters I will give him an everlasting name meaning to this part of perfection which is called a hand that shall not be cut off if it five for all generations another explanation is that I will give him means to him who knows. The secret of the eunuchs who keep my Shabbat with appropriate intention 482 Rabbi Shimon continued by citing the verse you shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Shabbat day Shema 353 and he explained that the reason for it is that there is no judgment on that day and he who kindles a fire arouses judgment you may protest that it rises high referring to the fire on the altar which burns on Shabbat as well he answers it is written throughout your habitations and not high above for that fire which ascends high rises to subdue another judgment for as we have learned there is a fire which consumes a fire and the fire of the altar consumes the other fire namely it subdues another judgment so it will not rule on the days of the week 483 therefore Atika Kaddish reveals himself on that day more than on any other day and when he reveals himself judgment is not in evidence at all and all the upper and lower beings are in perfect joy and judgment has no Dominion 484 we have learned from the verse for in six days Hashem made heavens and earth Shema 3117 that it was assuredly six days which are Shesed Bure Tifer of Netzach Hot and Yezid from which the heavens and earth being male and female were created therefore it is not written within six days those supernal holy days are called days in which the holy name Maljud which is called earth is included and they are contained in it happy is the portion of Israel above all the even nations of them it is written but you that did cleave to Hashem your Elohim are alive every one of you this day of Aram 44 section 28 honor your father and your mother Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Abba explain that father is the spring of the holy fountain which feeds the river from Eden and that Eden itself is called father Rabbi Shimon adds that the words honor your father refer to the holy ones your infant and your mother refers to the congregation of Yisrael Malchut from here the discussion turns to the first five of the Ten Commandments showing us that they include the second five within them and they are appeared and analyzed at some length Rabbi Lazar explains that all the laws of the Torah are engraved in the Ten Commandments for the Torah is the name of the Holy One blessed be he 485 honor your father and your mother Shema 2012 Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse and a river went out of Eden Bereshit 210 and a river is the spring of the fountain which flows constantly and never stops and once the whole garden of Eden is watered and the spring of the Holy Fountain is called Father because it maintains the garden 486 Rabbi Abba said that Eden itself is called Father because it issues from a place called Ayin not the Keter of Eric and of which no one can conceive it is therefore called Father we have already explained that the place whence everything issues is called Adam. Lit you and is called Avi lit father as it is written you are our father Yeshayah 6316 487 Rabbi Shimon said the words honor your father allude to the holy one blessed be he namely Zeir and your mother alludes to the congregation of Israel namely Malchut the particle ET before you alludes to the supernal Shechina which is the Nukva is from the chest above of Zeir and Rabbi Yehuda said that honor your father is unspecified and your mother is unspecified because they account for everything they signify Chakma and Bina and also Zeir and the Nukva since the words are not specific and the article ET adds all that is above and all that is below both Abba and Ima and male and female 488 Rabbi Yusi referred to Rabbi Abba's remark that the place whence everything begins is called you for we have learned that what is hidden and has no beginning of bestowing Mokin is called he namely the third person the place whence there is a beginning of Bestowing Mokin is called you and is also called Father and it is all one blessed be his name forever and ever. Amen. 489 Rabbi Shizkiya said assuredly they are all one. Honor your father indicates the holy one blessed be he namely Zeir and your mother indicates the congregation of Israel namely Malchut for we have learned from Rabbi Shimon that the verse you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 alludes to the place called children which are male and female. Therefore the verse honor your father and your mother includes all meaning Abba and Ima above and below Rabbi Yitzhak said that it includes one's teacher of the Torah who ushers one to the world to come. Rabbi Yehuda said that the teacher is included in the holy one blessed be he 490 we have learned that the first five commandments in the right side are all inclusive in these five commandments the second five of the left are engraved five within five how the first commandment I am Hashem. Your Elohim Shema 202 corresponds to you shall not murder for as we learn these two are under one principle for one who murders diminishes the image and likeness of his master because according to the scripture in the image of Elohim made he man bear sheet 96 and, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man Yashiskel 126 491 Rabbi Shia said it is written whoever sheds man's blood by man his blood shall be shed bear sheet 96 he who sheds blood is considered as if he diminishes the supernal image and likeness above meaning that he does not diminish the image of the man below but another image and this is the interpretation of the verse whoever sheds man's blood by man his blood shall be shed the damage he does by shedding blood reaches the supernal man why for in the image of Elohim made he man therefore they are interdependent the first commandment depends on you shall not murder 492 you shall have no other Elohim beside me corresponds to you shall not commit adultery the adulterer is false to the name of the holy one blessed be he which is impressed upon man a sin including many other sins and entailing corresponding punishments he who is unfaithful in this is unfaithful towards the king as it is written they have dealt treacherously against Hashem for they have begotten strange children Hashia 57 and you shall not bow down to them nor serve them one is the result of the other thus you shall have no other Elohim I is connected with you shall not commit adultery 493 you shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain corresponds to you shall not steal for a thief is inclined to swear falsely because he who steals also lies as it is written whoever is partner with a thief is his own enemy he hears the adoration of witnesses but discloses nothing Mishlei 2924 494 remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy corresponds to you shall not bear false witness against your Neighbor for as Rabbi Yossi said the Shabbat day is called a witness and man should bear testimony to the verse in six days Hashem made heaven and earth and Shabbat comprises everything Rabbi Yossi said that he who bears false witness against his neighbor lies against the Shabbat which is the true witness and the verse he will show truth to Jacob Misha 720 refers to the same motive which is expressed in the verse wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat Shema 3116. Therefore he who lies against the Shabbat lies against the whole Torah hence they are interdependent thus remember I as connected to you shall not bear false 495 honor your father and your mother corresponds to you shall not covet your neighbor's wife according to the explanation of Rabbi Yitzhak honor your father refers to one's own father for when he who covets a woman begets a child the child will honor another who is not his own father it is written honor your father and your Mother and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. The second part of the former is that your days may be long in the land which Hashem your Elohim gives you, meaning that whatever is given to you shall be yours, and you shall not covet another. Assuredly, they are interdependent. Thus, honor I as connected with you shall not covet. 496. These first five commandments on the right side include the second five. Therefore, from his right hand went a fiery law for them. Devarim 332. For all was included in the right, and the Torah was proclaimed in five voices. Rabbi Yehuda said that the whole ten commandments were folded in such a way that five were within five, corresponding to the five books of the Torah. 497. Rabbi Lazar explained that in the ten commandments were engraved all the laws of the Torah, all the decrees and punishments, all the laws concerning purity and impurity, all the branches and the roots, trees and plants, heavens and earth, seas and depths. For the Torah is the name. Of the Holy One, blessed be He, is the name of the Holy One, blessed be He, is engraved in the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are the name of the Holy One, blessed be He, so is the whole Torah engraved in them, and the whole Torah is thus one name, the Holy Name of the Holy One, blessed be He, indeed. 498, blessed is the one who is worthy of the Torah, for He will be worthy of the Holy Name. Rabbi Yossi said that He will be worthy of the Holy One, blessed be He Himself, as He and His name are
corresponds to the silver is mine being chisa the right column while your name is great in my corresponds to the gold is mine which is pure the left column these two colors are only visible in their full beauty when they are engraved in one place namely Yisrael being the central column Tiferet which includes and balances both of them here the colors are seen in their beauty as it is written you are my servant Yisrael in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 501 Rabbi Yehuda Opened his discourse with the verse I will greatly rejoice in Hashem my soul shall be joyful in my Elohim for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation Yeshua 6110 blessed is the portion of Israel above all heathen nations for they have their joy in the Holy One blessed be he as it is written I will greatly rejoice in Hashem as it says Hashem why add my Elohim Israel said that when he comes with mercy I will greatly rejoice in Hashem which is mercy and when he comes in judgment then my soul shall be joyful in my Elohim which is judgment 502 why do Israel rejoice in times of mercy as well as in those of judgment for these two are imprinted upon him the Holy One blessed be he as indicated by the words for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation meaning that these garments of salvation are the colors of Shisa and Gvira so imprinted that one can gain the perception of him namely derived Chakma it is written they looked but there was none to Save to Hashem to Shmuel 2242 and salvation means looking whoever wishes to behold me let him behold my colors of Shisa and Gvira what is the reason it is found in the verse he has covered me with the robe of righteousness if it exactly righteousness namely Malchut called righteousness as those two colors engraved in her for Chakma is drawn only by Malchut as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland Yeshua 6110 is one color Shisa and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. If it is the other color Gvira and when both colors are united in the central column they are visible and all are aflame to behold him 503 Rabbi Yossi said that the words I will greatly rejoice in Hashem refer to two kinds of joy one joy is in Hashem meaning in mercy and my soul shall be joyful in my Elohim is in judgment Rabbi Yehuda said they rejoice both in mercy and in judgment and in each joy there is joy upon joy however the joy which the Holy One blessed be he will bring upon. Israel in the future the joy in Zion will excel them all as it is written and the ransomed of Hashem shall return and come to Zion with songs Yeshua 3510 and the ransomed of Hashem shall return signifies one joy and come to Zion with songs signifies the second and everlasting joy upon their heads the third and they shall obtain joy and gladness is the fourth joy these are four kinds of joy which correspond to the four exiles of Israel among the nations then in that day shall you say praise Hashem call upon his name Yeshua 124 section 30 I am Hashem your Elohim part 2 we learned that Malchut the moon was in perfect unity with Zer and ben equal with him and under the same crown after the moon was diminished she received light only from the sun and her own aspect is hidden the section then tells of the meaning of Ayanakai the secret that contains everything it closes by saying that souls are punished for sins they committed in earlier. Incarnations 504 and Elohim spoke all these words saying Shema 201 all these words means that the Ten Commandments contain everything that there is above and below 505 I signifies the mystery of the supernal world namely the Nukba which is placed from the chest above of Zeir Anpin this is the secret of the holy name Yehavah being the three columns Jesus Vira and Tiferet which the Nukba receives from Zeir Anpin I Malchud was first revealed and later concealed she was revealed in the holy secret of the throne by for Malchud was the fourth leg of the throne and the moon Malchud was then in perfect unity with Zeir Anpin which means that both Malchud and Zeir Anpin were equal and were under the same crown and she is hidden when the sun Zeir Anpin rules and the moon receives its light from it not having then any praise of its own except the praise of light which Zeir Anpin radiates upon it thus its own aspect is hidden this happened after the moon was Diminished 506 I signifies Malchud when she is completing part of the perfection of the lower throne, meaning that after she was diminished and descended from above the chest to below the chest and was established there as the principle of the lower throne all the holy living creatures departed from her then being in perfection and beauty when her husband Zeir Anpin comes to her she is called I 507 I is the secret which contains everything together by including all the 22 letters and the 32 paths of Chakma which means all the 22 letters in the 32 paths of the Torah that permeate from the supernal secret namely from Chakma from this I all the upper and lower secrets are suspended I contains the secret of the reward kept for the righteous who are the Torah keepers and await him through this I they have faith in the world to come this is derived from I am Pharaoh Bershi 4144 these words said in order to assure Joseph that his promise will be kept. 508 The two commandments I have Anakai and you shall have no Shema 203 contain the secret of the Torah which is remember the Shabbat Shema 208 and keep the Shabbat Devarim 512 I signifies the secret of remember and you shall have no signifies the secret of keep I contains the concealed and kept secret of all the grades of the supernal world being the Yudha and Bob united together as mentioned above and when the word I had been uttered all were united within one secret for I signifies the unity of all the grades 509 the word I have Anakai contains the secret of the two thrones which are the supernal throne by having Malchut as a fourth leg and the lower throne being Malchut herself after becoming diminished as mentioned above on the Aleph Nunyat on the equals I have Anakai alludes to the lower throne and the letter CAF of the word Anakai alludes to the supernal throne 510 the word Anakai indicates that the temple is purified which is Malchut and that no Stranger has approached it, the temple alone radiated its life for then the evil inclination was removed from the world and the Holy One blessed be he alone was exalted in glory then the words I am Hashem your Elohim were uttered having the complete secret folded in his holy name the letter Aleph of Anakai indicates the unification of the secret of the holy name together with its grades into one as its secret is the letter Bab of Yudhi Hey Bab Hey the letter none in the word Anakai indicates the secret of standing in awe of the Holy One blessed be he knowing that there is a judge and judgment the righteous will be rewarded and the wicked will be punished for its secret is the lower Hey in the name Yudhi Hey Bab Hey 511 the letter CAF in the word Anakai signifies that one should sanctify the holy name daily sanctify oneself through holy grades and say the everyday prayers to him to raise the supreme crown the secret of the upper throne namely by in the proper manner above it. Supernal living creatures, which are Chisa and Vira Tiferet and Malchut from the chest above of Zeir Anpin and the four legs of the throne whose fourth living creature and fourth leg is Malchut its secret is the supernal Hay of the name Yudhi Hay Bab Hay which is Bina since Malchut is the fourth leg of the supernal throne which is Bina she is considered as pertaining to Bina and to the upper Hay of Yudhi Hay Bab Hay 512 the letter Yud in the word Anakai indicates that one should study the Torah day and night and circumcise his son on the eighth day and sanctify the firstborn and put on Tephilin and wear the fringes hefts it and affix a mezuzah and surrender his life to cleave to the Holy One blessed be he with his whole heart these are the twelve supernal commandments which are alluded to by the word Anakai which include 236 other commandments bringing it to 248 positive commandments which are included in the words remember the Shabbat for remember includes 248 Positive commandments and keep includes the 365 negative commandments. This letter is not interchangeable with another place as the Aleph Nun and CAF of Anakai, which are interchangeable with Hebab and Hey of Yudhi Hebab Hey for the letter Yud signifies the supernal secret of the whole Torah, meaning that it is the secret of the lower Chakma which unites with the letter Yudhi of Yudhi Hebab Hey, the secret of the upper Chakma. Therefore, this is not a change of place. Those 12 commandments include the 12 attributes of mercy which are derived from them, and one rules them all, which is the essence of Malchud, which is called Anakai, bringing it to 13 corresponding to the 13 attributes of mercy. 513 The commandment, You shall have no other Elohim. Shema 203 signifies the secret of keep, which includes the 365 negative precepts in the Torah. The letter Lamedin, You shall have no Hebel Lamed Aleph contains the secret of not worshipping or paying respect to other. Elohim the letter lamed has the form of a tower rising up in the air one should not be tempted to build a castle to other Elohim in the secret of building a tower as in the time of the generation of the
of the word Anakai and you shall have no 515 Rabbi Shimon said we have learned that the word Anakai Litai includes the above and the below the upper and lower beings it includes the holy living creatures all is included in the secret of Anakai you shall have no refers to the secret below of the 12 lower living creatures in Malchut 516 you shall not make for yourself any carved idol head pistol alludes to the dross head pistol of that lofty place namely the left side of Holiness Pistol being the refuse of holiness, the secret of other Elohim as it is written, and I looked and behold a storm wind came out of the north. Yashis call 14, the north is the secret of the left side of holiness, any likeness of anything. Shema 204 as it is written, a fire flaring up. Yashis call 14, for I Hashem your Elohim so that your heart should be directed upwards and it should not descend below and approach the portal of the other side. He is a jealous L4 in that place lies. Jealousy 517, this is the secret of for three things the earth is disquieted. Mishle 3021, which are you shall not make for yourself a carved idol and any likeness of anything for these the earth is disquieted. 518, it is written, punishing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. Shema 205, he was presented with the difficulty of the words, nor the children be put to death for the fathers. 146, and he answers that this is the same tree, the same soul coming once, twice, thrice, four times, which means it had been incarnated and come in four bodies, being punished for the first sins in the fourth reincarnation for the father, the son, the third, and fourth generations. Namely, these four incarnations are one being one soul that has not done its correction or care to attend to it. It is therefore punished for the sins in the first incarnations. The reverse is also true. A tree well established through incarnation stands for men. Of it, it is written, but showing mercy. Shema 205, section 31. You shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain. We learned that at the time that God created the world, He placed a stone with His name engraved upon it into the deep waters. The stone flows up to receive the oath of those who swear on the truth, and it returns to the deep waters. If the oath is false, the waters flow up, but the stone retreats without receiving the oath and the letters on the stone. Disperse in the deep until God invites Israel to engrave the holy letters as they were before and the world is settled by them. 519 You shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain. Shema 207 The secret has already been interpreted by the friends when the Holy One blessed be he planted the world he planted into the deep waters his name engraved upon a stone since then when the water desires to rise intending to drown the world it sees the holy name engraved on that stone and retreats and returns to its place and the holy name remains in the deep waters to this day. 520 At the time when men take a true oath firmly attached to the truth that rock flows up and receives that oath and then it returns to its place in the deep waters and the world is maintained by that true oath. 521 When men take a false oath that rock flows up intending to receive that oath but when it sees that this oath was taken in vain it retreats and all the waters flow up and the letters of that stone soar inside the deep and disperse and the waters wish to cover the world and return it to its former state of water 522 then the holy one blessed be he invites Yisrael the minister who is in charge of 70 keys of the secret of the holy name he then engraves the holy letters as they were before and the world is settled by them and the deep waters return to their place of that it is written you shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain Shema 207 we learn that the twelfth commandment is to swear by God's name truthfully for he who takes a true oath combines himself with the supernal seven grades he who takes a false oath causes malchut to be disturbed taking a vow is a stricter act than taking an oath for it is connected higher rai may him to the faithful shepherd 523 the twelfth commandment is to swear in his name in a truthful way and he who takes an oath combines himself with the supernal seven grades in which the name of the holy one Blessed be he which is Malchut is included thus there are six grades Jesus be retired at Netzach hot and Yizid and when man take a true oath he then includes himself with them by becoming a seventh corresponding to Malchut so as to maintain the holy name which is Malchut in its place therefore it is written and shall swear by his name to Aram 613 and he who takes a false oath causes that place Malchut to be disturbed in its abode 524 the oath to keep one's master's commandment is a true oath and the evil inclination denounces him and tempts this man to transgress his master's commandment such as an oath with which his master praises himself and it is proper for man to take a true oath in the name of his master for then the holy one blessed be he is praised by this oath as Boaz did as written as Hashem lives lie down until the morning Rug 313 he took an oath for the evil inclination was then denouncing him he therefore swore to it 525 a vow had netter is connected Higher end is the king's life, meaning the Mokin of Malchut in by the secret of 248 limbs and 12 ties, which are the four Sfirat, Chisit, and Gvira, Tiferet, and Malchut. Each one of these Sfirat includes the three columns, thus the amount to the numerical value of Neder equals 254, as 248 plus 12 amounts to 254. Therefore, taking a vow is a stricter act than taking an oath. This king's life maintains all the 248 limbs, and it is called the king's life, for indeed it gives life, and this life descends from above from the endless light downwards to the source of life, which is Bina, from which it descends to Malchut to all the 248 limbs. 526 An oath maintains a lower grade, the secret of the holy name, which is Malchut, called the king himself, whose supernal spirit within his body comes to dwell in it and stay in it as a spirit dwelling in a body, which means that the Mokin are already placed in the vessel of Malchut, which is called body, for it is hidden above in Bina and is. Revealed only in Malchut, therefore he who takes a true oath maintains that place and by doing so the whole world is maintained of how it applies to both that which is obligatory and optional but an oath is not so as it does not apply to precepts this has been explained by the friends and of R.A.I. Mayhem the section 32 remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy part 2 we are reminded that the Sabbath includes the whole Torah and he who keeps the Sabbath is considered to have kept the entire Torah 527 remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy Shema 208 this is the secret of the holy covenant which is yes for in this covenant lie all the sources of the limbs of the body and it comprises everything in the same manner the Shabbat day includes all the Torah all of its secrets originate in it and he who keeps the Shabbat is considered as one who keeps the whole Torah the section talks about remember and keep and the three grades the supernal Sabbath. The Sabbath day and Sabbath night, that include all the secrets of the whole Torah, the law, the prophets, and the writings are A.I. Mahin, the faithful shepherd, 528. The 24th commandment is to remember the Shabbat day as written, remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. We have explained the secret of Shabbat in many places. It is to be remembered as the day of the world's rest, and it includes the whole Torah, and he who keeps the Shabbat is considered as one who keeps the whole Torah. We have already learned that a man who remembers the Shabbat has to sanctify it in all manners of sanctifications. He who remembers the king has to praise him, and he who remembers the Shabbat day has to sanctify it, as we have already learned. 529 Remember applies to the male, which is Zeir and, and keep applies to the female, which is Malchut. The Shabbat day is the secret of the whole faith, which is suspended from the supernal head, which is Keter to the bottom of all the grades. Shabbat is everything 530 there are three grades and all of them are called Shabbat these are the supernal Shabbat which is Bina Shabbat day which is Zeir and Shabbat night which is Malchut all of them are called Shabbat and when the time comes for one of them to rule all the others are invited to rule with it and when it is manifested in the world all come to be with it 531 when the time of Shabbat night comes it invites the Shabbat day to its palace and they are both hidden. Once it comes the supernal Shabbat is drawn over it and all of them are concealed in the palace of the Shabbat night therefore the meal on Shabbat night is as significant as the one during the Shabbat day 532 when the time of Shabbat day comes which is Zeir and it invites the other two the supernal and the lower grades the one which illuminates namely Bina and the one which is illuminated from it namely Malchut all these three grades together are called Shabbat and rule on the day. Of Shabbat and they include and are the secrets of the whole Torah, the law, the prophets, and the writings, and he who keeps the Shabbat keeps the whole Torah. Section 33, two pearls we read of two pearls, a supernal pearl, Bina, and a lower pearl, Malchut, which are separated by a curtain that is made of the 22 letters that comprise the whole Torah. There is a long description of the
and they are both united of these two colors. Two other names are formed until the letters produce seven names for each one of the letters of Aleph Hey Yudhe and Yudhe Hey Bob becomes one name. 536 He explains how the seven letters become seven names. He says that the letter Aleph of the name Aleph Hey Yudhe Hey comes out shining and enters into the letter Bob of the name Yudhe Hey Bob and they illuminate in two colors white and red as mentioned above and become two names. One name is called Yud. Hey Bob Hey and the other one is called Aleph Lamed meaning L and both of them shine together. The letter Hey of the name Aleph Hey Yudhe Hey comes out shining and enters and combines with the letter Hey of the name Yudhe Hey Bob and they illuminate in two colors white and red and become two names. One is called Yud Hey Bob Hey and the secret of the vowel of Elohim in which the letter Yudhe is vowel with a semi vowel shetaf sequel and the Hey with the vowel kolam and the Bob with chirik in one. Is called Elohim and the letters shine together Yud of Aleph Hey Yudhe Hey enters into the Yud of Yudhe Hey Bob and they both shine penetrating each other imprinted upon and engraved together and they lift their head meaning that they attain the three first Sfirah shining and glittering and eleven branches shoot forth from each side the right and the left and together they are twenty two branches the secret of the twenty two letters five hundred and thirty seven those two shining letters the Yudhe of Aleph Hey Yudhe Hey and the Yudhe of Yudhe Hey Bob embracing each other are Yud Hey Bob Hey Yud Hey Bob Hey Mem Zedek Pe Zedek Mem Zedek Pe Zedek in the secret of the thirteen attributes of mercy when these two letters interpenetrate and embrace each other and lift their heads attaining the first three Sfirah they shine and glitter upon all with eleven branches shooting forth from each side eleven from the left and eleven from the right and together they are the twenty two letters of the Torah as mentioned above for. The whole Torah and wisdom are revealed by the twenty-two letters. Five hundred and thirty-eight. The remaining hey of Aleph Hey Yudhe Hey is raised by one name Aleph Dalit Nunya to join with them. From then on, he explains that this letter descended from there to the lower pearl and all those raised shining names issue and rule on that Shabbat day since they rule the supernal pearl. The first three Sfirah of Bina comes out protruding and shining without any color. Five hundred and thirty-nine. When the pearl comes out, it unites with and gives plenty to those names Aleph Hey Yudhe Hey and Yudhe Hey Bob, which are its seven lower Sfirah. Then one of the names Aleph Dalit Nunya, which is Malchut from the chest and below, which is the seventh, is crowned and enters the lower pearl, which is Malchut. Then another name replaces Aleph Dalit Nunya Yudhe. This is Yud Hey, namely Chakma, and by the then the supernal pearl is settled by the name of Yudhe Hey and it is adorned by the radiation of the light of this name. Five hundred and forty after the supernal pearl unites. With and is bestowed with plenty by those names Aleph Hey Yudhe Hey and Yudhe Hey Bob as mentioned above seventy branches shoot forth from all the sides which are Zeir and Pen and all of them join together and become a chariot and a throne to the supernal pearl and the king which is Chakma is crowned on that day and rules and all rejoice since all rejoice the king sits on his throne which is raised by seventy branches as we have mentioned for the seventy branches are Zeir and Pen whose Chisit Vira Tiferet and Malchut become its four legs five hundred and forty one those two letters namely the two Yudhes of the names Aleph Hey Yudhe Hey and Yudhe Hey Bob ascend and descend and illuminate and adorn the twenty two letters being the whole Torah they unite with the two first letters of the twenty two letters namely the Tav and the Shin in reverse alphabetical order and they ascend through their light the one to the six tribes and the other to the other six tribes these are the twelve tribes of supernal Israel namely. Yisrael Saba the secret of the four grades, Chisit and Gvirat and Malchut every one of which includes the three columns bringing together the twelve five hundred and forty two those two letters the two Yudhs in the names Aleph Hey Yudhe and Yudhe Hey Bob ascend and descend and unite with the two last letters of the twenty two letters when arranged in reverse order of Tafshin Resh Kof namely Bet and Aleph they ascend and illuminate five grades each corresponding together to ten sayings these ten sayings include the twenty two letters the twelve tribes emerged by the two letters Taf and Shin together with the ten sayings of the last two letters Bet and Aleph which are the whole Torah namely Zeir and Pen which is called Torah and which is created from those twenty two letters the supernal pearl inherits the secret upon the throne of seventy two and the twenty two letters shine five hundred and forty three when the supernal pearl sits upon the throne of the seventy two and the twenty two letters illuminate then the lower pearl which is in the darkness observes it. Illumination of the twenty-two letters through the letters imprinted upon it, which are called Aleph Dalit Nunya. Then that light ascends and shines and receives all those twenty-two supernal letters, and the lower pearl draws them, and then it shines in seventy-two directions. Five hundred and forty-four. Since that lower pearl shines and derives all those letters from it, the supernal pearl is then attracted to them, and pearl cleaves to pearl. The lower pearl, which is Malchut, clings to the supernal pearl, which is Bina, and both of them become one. This is the secret of a certain praise which we already expounded upon the song of praise El Adon, which is said on Shabbat day. Five hundred and forty-five. The twenty-two letters which shine on both sides to the right side and to the left are the curtain between the supernal pearl and the lower pearl, and they become the secret of the holy name of Mem. Bet forty-two letters, and this is the secret of the holy name of Ayin. Bet seventy-two letters of the supernal chariot, and both the name of Mem. Bet and the name of Ayin. Bet are. Called Shabbat, and this is the secret of Shabbat and of Rai Mahin. We read of the meaning of remember that is Zir Anpin, above which there is no forgetfulness. We are reminded to remember the Sabbath day 546. Remember is the secret of the male, which is Zir Anpin, which receives all the limbs, namely the whole Mokin of the supernal world, namely by the Heavy T. Shabbat day includes Shabbat, which is night, namely Malchut, which is called night. The word ET expresses it. For Malchut is called ET, it is necessary to keep it holy, for it must receive holiness from the holy nation and be crowned by them as is proper. 547. Remember comes from a place wherein there is no forgetfulness, for there is no forgetfulness in the place of the supernal covenant, which is Yezit, and all the more so above in Zir Anpin below in Malchut there is forgetfulness, for this is the place wherein men should be reminded as it is written, may the iniquity of his fathers be remembered. Tehillim 10,914, 548. There is no forgetfulness before the Holy Throne, that is she who stands in front of the Holy Throne, namely Bina, and who stands before the throne. Remember, namely Zeir Anpin, for Zeir Anpin stands before Bina and receives from her of Zeir Anpin. It is said, There is no forgetfulness before the throne of your honor above Zeir Anpin. There is no forgetfulness, for there lies the whole secret of the male, wherein the secret of the Holy Name Yahabab is engraved below, namely. In Malchut, men should be sanctified by fulfilling the commandment, remember the Shabbat day, which is Zeir Anpin, from which Malchut derives all her blessings and holiness. Then Shabbat eve, namely Malchut, is crowned as it should be by the prayers of the Holy Nation and by joyful preparations. 549. You might say that, remember, namely Zeir Anpin does not need to be sanctified by Israel, for all the blessings and holiness in the world come from it. This is not so for Zeir Anpin should be. Sanctified on the Shabbat day and Malchut on the Shabbat night and only then Israel are sanctified by the holiness of the Holy One. Blessed be he. Section 34. Honor your father and your mother. We are told to honor the Holy One. Blessed be he who is our father and Malchut who is our mother. By studying the Torah and observing the commandments a man is created from two drops of seed, one from his father and one from his mother and the parents have an obligation to teach their children to learn Torah and good deeds. There are three partners in creating a man the father and mother who gave him his body and God who gave him his soul. A man must honor all three of them. He must also perform correct actions with all of his heart and desire with the correct intentions. 550. Honor your father and your mother. Shema 2012. Honor them with respect and gladden them with good deeds as it is written. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. Mishlei 2324. 4. This is the way one should honor his father and mother are Ai Mahim the faithful shepherd 551 honor your father and your mother honor the holy one blessed be he which is called your father
and good deeds 554 a man should teach his son Torah as it is written and you shall teach them diligently to your children Devarim 67 otherwise he is as if he makes him idols therefore it is written you shall not make for yourself any carved idol Shema 204 the ignorant son is destined to be an unruly child who treats his father and mother with contempt and robs them of many blessings for since he is ignorant he is suspected to transgress in everything even idolatry incest and bloodshed for when the ignorant goes where he is not known and does not know how to say a benediction he is believed to be an idol worshipper and of RAI may in the 555 honor your father means the same as honor Hashem with your substance your substance means your money and your substance means your grace meaning with a joyful tune for then the heart is gladdened as when any melody is sounded the son's good deeds gladden the hearts of his father and mother thus with your substance means with your money for anything necessary 556 as a man honors the holy one blessed be he so should he honor his father and mother for they are in partnership over him with the holy one blessed be he for there are three partners in creating man the holy one blessed be he the father and mother his father and mother give him the body and the holy one blessed be he gives him the soul as a man should have great fear of the holy one blessed be he so should he respect his father and mother and honor them by all the means he has 557 that your days may be long Shema 2012 for there are days above, namely the seven Sfirat Chesed, Birat, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazet and Malchut, on which a man's life in this world depends we have explained that these are man's days in that world above the seven Sfirat which are placed before the Holy One blessed be he and by the man's life is known 558 in the land which Hashem your Elohim gives you but this is a promise given to enjoy the shining. Mirror in the land is the mirror which shines upon the supernal days, Chesed, Birat, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazet and Malchut of Zeir and and which shines from the fount of everything which is by the 559 he asks what is the difference between the two commandments of the Torah of which it is written that your days may be long this one and the other which refers to driving away the mother bird from the nest he answers both of the commandments refer to the world above Abba and Ima are the Secret of remember and keep in one being Zeir Anpin and Malchut therefore it is written that your days may be long in regards to letting the mother bird go from the nest it is written but you shall surely let the mother go and take the young to you that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days to Barum 227 this is the secret of the supernal world which is by the being called mother meaning that no permission is given to look at her and one should steer away from asking any questions or looking at her 560 and take the young to you here the young are Zeir Anpin and Malchut as it is written for us now of the days that are past which were before you since the day that Elohim created man upon the earth and from the one side of heaven to the other to Barum 432 meaning that one can ask a question of and look at heaven which is Zeir Anpin called heaven which can be investigated and observed but above the heavens Zeir Anpin you not should let your Thoughts investigate 561 therefore it is written that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days it says that it may be well with you in the third person it is not written that your days may be long but rather that you may prolong your days it may be well with you refers to the place from which goodness issues for everyone and this is the hidden and unrevealed world by that you may prolong your days meaning by your own strength as it is written and take the young to you for one is capable of clinging to the children which are Zeir and Malchut for through them one has a length of days 562 if one has the opportunity to perform a precept and he does so attentively then he is considered as a righteous man and even if this is not his intention he is still considered righteous because he fulfills the commandment of his master for performing a precept does not require an intention yet he who does not understand the reason is not considered as he who directs his will for the sake of doing it and meditates upon it with the wish to behold the glory of his master this is because an intentional deed depends upon the wish such a deed below arouses a corresponding act above which is Malchut called an act and is properly rectified 563 as in a physical action an act of the soul is also manifested through that intention for the Holy One blessed be he desires the heart and intention of man if a person does not fulfill the commandment with his heart which is the most essential quality of this pray David and establish the work of our hands upon us O prosper at the work of our hands Tehillim 9017 for not everyone has the capability to be mindful and to direct his heart to correct everything and perform a precept he therefore said this prayer and establish the work of our hands upon us 564 he asks for the meaning of and establish the work of our hands upon us and he answers that establish means accomplish your Establishment properly above upon us, although we know only how to act but not how to direct the right intentions of the heart. O prosper at the work of our hands, he asks prosper whom and answers the grade that needs establishing, namely Malchut, it must prosper so that it can be united with the fathers, which are Chesed, Bira, and Tiferet of Zeir Anpin, and in whom it will be properly established through the steed. Section 35 You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. This section tells us that in specific instances killing may be prohibited or permitted in order to kill those who transgress the law, intercourse may be prohibited or allowed for correct reasons like procreation. The text goes on to tell how the tonal pause in each commandment allows for the possibility of prohibition or permission under certain circumstances. However, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor is always forbidden, you shall not covet is always. Forbidden except for the desire of the Torah in truth the Ten Commandments contain the essence of all celestial and terrestrial commandments and through their engraving on the tablets of stone they were revealed to all the children of Israel at that time the bodies of the children of Israel became lucent with no impurity and their souls were bright as they beheld the glory of their master the Holy One blessed be he was made known both above and below and he was exalted over all 565 you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal Shema 2013 to 15 under the word shall not have low in all three commandments there is a tonal pause for in the absence of this interrupted mark harmony would be unattainable in the world it would be forbidden to kill even one who transgresses the law however the presence of the pause teaches that in specific instances killing may be prohibited or permitted 566 you shall not commit adultery in the absence of this tonal Pause it would be prohibited to engage in the commandments of procreation or to enjoy marital intercourse the inclusion of the trope indicates the possibility of prohibition or permission you shall not steal in the absence of the interrupted market would be forbidden to deceive one Torah teacher or a Torah scholar in order to gaze upon him furthermore it would be prohibited for a judge to trick a swindling claimant or two disputants in order to clarify the truth however once again it punctuation indicates that it is permitted or prohibited 567 you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor Shema 2013 here there is no tonal pause indicating that this is always forbidden the Holy One blessed be he has placed supernal mysteries in all the words of Torah and instructed mankind how to strive towards perfection through it as it is written I am Hashem your Elohim who teaches you for your prophet who leads you by the way that you should go Yeshayah 4817 568 also in the commandment you shall not covet a bit 17 the tonal pause is absent if you say that even desiring Torah is forbidden due to the absence of the punctuation come and behold the previous prohibitions were stated in a general manner however specific details were stated in regards to this prohibition as it is written your neighbor's house his field or his manservant to 518 the prohibition extends only towards material possessions thus excluding the Torah which is forever desirable. It is delight and eternal life in this world and the world to come 569 the ten commandments of the Torah contain the essence of all celestial and terrestrial commandments the essence of the ten sayings of creation they were engraved on tablets of stone and all the hidden things in them were seen by everybody's eyes so as to conceive and behold the secret of the 613 commandments of the Torah everything was revealed to their eyes through understanding to the attentive hearts of all of Israel everything shown before their eyes 570 at that hour all the mysteries of the Torah were revealed no mystery of heaven and earth was held back from them for they saw the splendor of the glory of their master that which has never occurred since the creation of the world the revelation of the glory of the Holy One blessed be he upon Mount Sinai 571 you might say that we learned that upon the crossing of the Red Sea even a maidservant saw more than the prophet Ezekiel that it resembled the day when Israel stood upon Mount Sinai this is not so for on this day all the dross was removed from them and their bodies became as lucent as the angels above when they are clothed in radiant garments for the accomplishments of their
wombs could observe their master's glory and everyone received according to his worth 574 on that day the holy one blessed be he rejoiced more than on any previous day since he had created the world for the world had no proper existence before Israel received the Torah as it is written if my covenant be not day and night it is as if I had not made the ordinances of heaven and earth here may 3325 575 once Israel received the Torah on Mount Sinai the world was completely sweetened and heaven and earth received the proper foundation and the holy one blessed be he was made known both above and below and he was exalted in his glory over all concerning that day it is written Hashem reigns he is clothed with majesty Hashem is robed he has girded himself with strength Tehillim 921 and strength is the Torah as it is written Hashem gives strength to his people Hashem blesses his people with peace Tehillim 2911